Welcome back, guys. Before we get into episode eight, we just want to let you know that this is going to be kind of all over the place. This is the first time that we have done a podcast where we have spliced and cut pieces out and recorded over multiple days to try to give you guys content. And um, though we were able to make a cohesive cut, as far as I'm concerned, there are going to be things that we omitted and removed and emails that were cut short for obvious reasons. Um, but we didn't want to just scrap everything. There's gold in some of those emails, and we want to make sure that we bring you the content that we're bringing you. So um, just keep in mind that as you listen to this episode, that the emails are kind of all over the place, and um, we're, we did our best. And we are back. Episode eight, bitches. <laughs> Just right out the gate. <laughs> Why not? <clears throat> we, uh, we're doing a thing, man. Eight episodes. Are, yeah. eight, eight, eight official episodes and like, I don't know, okay. five, 500 hours of extra content on YouTube. Yeah. If you guys aren't on YouTube, I know that it's time consuming and some of you don't want to pay for the premium YouTube so that you can listen to it with your phone off. You are missing a lot. You really are missing a lot. That four email episode that was an hour and 45 minutes that was done as a bonus cast yesterday mm -hmm. was one of those things that we just recorded yesterday. We recorded for uh, two and a half hours and got a, an hour and 45 minute episode up mm -hmm. and, and we did it as a bonus cast just to give you guys extra content, but... YouTube gets content almost daily. We have we've got five hours coming out between now and Saturday. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm still going through it. I'm still coughing and mucusy and gross. So if you hear me clear my throat and coughing, I apologize. I can't control it. Um, I did take some mucinex, mucinex. So hopefully when I'm coughing, you hear me actually spitting it out because that would be amazing instead of just keeping it in my chest the way that it is. That sucks. It's gross. <coughs> um, disclaimer. These are opinions, not advice. <laughs> so you can take it with a grain of salt. Um, I was actually told by a paralegal this morning that we can give advice. We don't have to do this. Oh, really? It's no different than people on TikTok or YouTube giving cryptocurrency advice. You can do that. And if you lose everything, you knew the risk going into it. You can't sue those people. <clears throat> they can try. They right. can they can spend their money to try to sue you. And then you can counter sue them for lawyer fees. And they're going to end up paying for that. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that we actually really need to do a disclaimer anymore, but for my own safety, these are opinions. Yeah. It, it is just our opinion. It's things that we've learned that we're trying to share with you guys, and we hope that we're able to make your life better. If you find value in it, great. You can hit the subscribe button and share this with people. That would help us. Mm -hmm. um, all of that fun stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so I came across a comment that I just kind of wanted to throw on here real quick. Yeah. On TikTok, it was one of your videos, I believe. <laughs> A woman said, yeah, well, me and all of my independent women disagree with you. And I went to her page and she's married to a blue collar man. And I was like, so you're an independent woman spending your man's money. Yeah. <clears throat> make it make sense. Did, did you look to see if she had a job? Like, was she no, a stay-at-home? No, she's stay-at-home, yeah. Oh, really? Stay-at-home. Oh, no. And she's a strong independent woman. I, I would take that as an insult. I miss that comment. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. That's a really big A lot miss, of people were missed, jumping on her. Missed opportunity. A lot of people were jumping on her about it. I'm not being nice to people on TikTok anymore. Good. I know that I said that yesterday while we, we were recording. I've been shitting on people in the comments and actually making videos being nasty to people. Mm -hmm. And I know that it's going to cost me followers in some accounts, but I'm, I'm tired of the um, lack of accountability and people doing insane shit and it just going unchecked. Right. I'm over it. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to start being a dick. If you say some off the wall shit in the comments, there's a good spot, uh, chance that you're going to get a response from me. You're giving me content. Yeah. So, and it's growing my channel. I'm I'm up to like 173,000 followers on TikTok Now I've jumped mm -hmm. like 25,000 followers in the last two weeks. Yeah. So apparently the content that we're making here being clipped by AJ and put onto YouTube is helping and people, me shitting on people is entertaining for a lot of other people because I'm getting followers that otherwise wouldn't have gotten. Yeah. And I'm shitting on some of my followers. If you follow me and say something really stupid, I'm, I'm going to call you on it. Like I expect oh, yeah. more of you if you're following us. I've had a lot of people <coughs> block and unfollow me because I've responded to their stupid comments. Block and unfollow you? Well, they would unfollow me first and then I'd call them out for unfollowing me <laughs> and then they would block me. I enjoy that. 
blows my mind. But that whole comment just got to me a little bit because as somebody who used to be an independent woman, and when I say independent, I mean I was working 60 to 8 hours a week, paying all of my own bills, managing my own money, taking care of kids. I, I didn't have anybody in my household helping me. It was just me. In my mind, that is independent. Right. When you're married with a blue collar man who allows you to stay at home, at that you're not independent. Right. If you, you if you're married, you're not independent. Right. You're a fucking team. Ooh, f bomb. That was quick. <laughs> that Whole was, four minutes in. Go me. <laughs> that was really quick. Uh, I'm gonna be better. I believe in <clears> you. <throat> you can do this. I'm trying. This whole movement. If I were still a single woman and I was paying for everything on my own and I had all of that stress in my life and I heard a stay-at-home wife say, I have a strong, independent woman, girl, let's trade lives for a day. Yeah. You want to you wanna know what real independence is? I, I would never want to do that again. Yeah. Mm-mm. I think that, that people that, that tout that independent lifestyle and push the be single girl, get your bag and... Mm-hmm the high value man and all of that nonsense, aside from it being purely about division, because that's what I truly believe it is. <clears throat> you are missing out on the benefits of having someone to hustle with. Right. You can do a lot by yourself. Mm-hmm. You truly can. You can, I mean, you can hit success all by yourself, but it's a whole lot easier when you got a team behind you. It is. It's just all there is to it. And, and like when you've got somebody that's already got a work ethic and a grind and a hustle, and you've got somebody in that can come in and like, just remove some of the, the weight off their shoulders. It mm-hmm. lets them level. They can work harder. They have more time to focus on the important shit. Success happens faster that way. I love what we have. I <laughs> can't wait to get back to the shop. Me either. I'm so excited to start tattooing. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> I'm going to take some time today to work on my art. Yeah. And I don't know. I just feel like I'm evolving into a new me. You know that I'm going to have to buy another computer. Why? Because I oh, won't yeah, be able to the, edit. For the shop. Yeah. We're going to record at nighttime when we get off of work, and then mm-hmm. I'm going to take the SD cards to the shop and edit while we're there. Yep. It's going to take time, and I'm going to need a system that's strong enough to do it, so I'm probably going to have to spend another four or five grand on a big dick computer. I don't want to. I really don't want to. Right. But I also don't want to spend all of my free time sitting in front of a computer at home editing. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I may buy a big, big laptop <clears throat> so yeah. that I can just take it to and from. I, I really don't want to buy another MacBook. Because I'm not a big fan of the Apple operating system, um, but that's a consideration as well. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I just don't want to have to learn new shortcuts. Right. The extra key is confusing to me, and everybody's like, "Oh, you just got to remember blah blah blah." I don't remember blah blah blah, which is why I just said blah 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 three times. <laughs> You're fun. <clears throat> you want to read that that comment that we got on TikTok, and we can jump into the first discussion, and then what do we got? Three emails. Yes, I have a fourth one picked out just in case. Okay. Yeah, because we're. We, I never know how long these things are going to take or how, how much we're going to derail. <laughs> so this person commented and asked me specifically, how do you be his piece? P-E-A-C-E. Yeah. For those who might get confused. You're, you're my P-I-E-C-E also. Yeah. Mm. I'm your hot piece. <laughs> <laughs> and she says, I am really struggling with that. <laughs> what? Huh, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> I'm a child. I mean, I'm an immature child. Yeah. That's what it comes down to. <laughs> she said, I'm really struggling with that. I want to be, but I feel like I nag a lot. Well, there's your answer. You nag a lot. Yeah, you just answered your own question. So, <clears throat> in regards... If, if you feel that way, I guarantee you he feels that way. In regards to being his piece, <laughs> I, I think I will forever use the keys trip as my example to being your piece. Okay. Is that a good example? It's a damn good example because I expected a huge fight. Right. Like, I, I uh, go ahead. So, you can explain this because they asked you, not me. So we went to the Keys <clears throat> and we had expectations. We were really excited. We thought we were going to go down there, have a good time, have a lot of opportunity to take really good photos. And we got there and it was just more Florida, but the water was different. <laughs> the water was a lot nicer. The water was nicer. I was pretty excited about seeing all the water. I, I had a good time, even though I was disappointed with the area and there wasn't as much to do as we thought there was going to be. And people really hyped it up. Like we thought we were going to go to this really dope ass photography location. In all reality, it was just tourist attractions and drunk people. Yeah. I, I want to read something that somebody <coughs> said to us because um, it's relevant. Okay. I got to find the comment though. So as you do that, I'm going to continue on with the story. Mm -hmm. 
you're getting frustrated because you're disappointed. You felt like you let me down in some way because I was super hyped up and it's not what we thought we were going to be. And other things were happening. The card got stolen. Someone spent over a grand on the card. So we were dealing with that. We get to the hotel. Everybody's already drunk and it's like 3 p.m. Elevator's sticky. We get to our room. They upgraded our room without telling us. So we have two separate beds instead of one king bed. So we had to deal with that whole debacle. Get to our new room. Sink's broken. So it's just one thing after another. I'm vibing. Like, I'm having a great time. And you're just going through it. I was miserable. You hated to be in there. You didn't want to be there anymore. You were dealing with the card. You're dealing with the phone. All of this shit. You know, when I, we made that video, we didn't even discuss the credit card getting swiped or the debit card getting swiped. I thought we did. It was on the original one that we tried to record and stopped. Oh, yeah. And when we re-recorded it, we didn't. So Julie Rock... You know who that is, right? She was a yes. TikTok subscriber that followed us over to YouTube. Mm -hmm. She said, no, Key West is beautiful and not all drunks. Capital not. We have a boat there and looking to buy a house there now. We love Key West. There are some beautiful places for photography and the place is full of history and culture. Don't stay in a hotel. Do an Airbnb. There are many people who go to the Keys or live in the Keys who aren't there to be drunk. I don't drink most of the time I'm there. If you ever change your mind and decide to give it another try, hit me up and I'd be happy to share some non-touristy drunk uh, people places to go. As a side note, I'm 45 minutes north of New Orleans and it's way worse with crime and filth. And at this point, even as a local Louisiana girl, I find it hard to justify being in New Orleans. Culture and history is rich and no doubt beautiful place to photograph, but ooh, it's just not worth it. Hmm. And I responded to her, but right. now that I've read this on the podcast and I know that she's going to hear it, Julie, you're going to owe us some some um, sightseeing tour guide the next time we're there. If you buy a house in, in, in the Keys, you now owe it to us to <laughs> message us and tell us that you're there so that we can then plan a new trip and you can change our mind. Because right now, I have no intention of ever returning to Key West. It was not fun. <clears throat> It was not fun. You enjoyed it. I did, but I hated that you didn't. So you weren't having fun. I felt guilty that I was having fun, but I'm trying to stay positive because one of us has to. Yeah. <laughs> and it was like 10 o'clock at night, <clears throat> first night in the hotel. You look at me and you're like, would you be upset if we left tomorrow? And I had one of two options in that moment. I could have lost my mind and said, what are you talking about? We just drove eight hours here. You know, we're supposed to be here for two days. You know, I'm excited about this. Spent all this money. Right. Like I could have made a whole ordeal out of it and forced you to stay mm -hmm. where you're miserable so I can have a good time. Or I could have just said, okay. Right. And I said, okay. We got up in the morning because you're kind of going back and forth that night about staying or leaving. Because when you get angry, you're like, let me calm down and think about it again. Right. I can't, can't make decisions when I'm upset. Right. So in the morning we woke up and I was like, are we leaving? You said, yeah. And I was like, okay. And I packed up my stuff. And the reason you decided to leave was because all night drunk girls up and down the hallway, excited, spilling drinks, screaming, fighting, stomping floor above us, drunk people walking around, stomping, all that stuff. We didn't get any sleep. So we packed up everything we got in the car and we left and we went to IHOP and I was super excited about IHOP because I got pancakes, <laughs> which we don't get to eat often. We left IHOP and I was sitting in the car and I got a little sad. Like it, it really hit me like I was really excited for that weekend. We were leaving. It was whatever. We ended up having a really good day. We did. We went to the scenic loop. You bought me a scratch off to make up for leaving. And you did those things because I didn't complain once. Right. That we were leaving. I'm, I'm, you made me feel like I mattered. Yeah. Right. So it, and that's the only way that I can explain that because most people on vacation, who's been excited to be going somewhere for a week or two weeks or however long they've been planning, mm -hmm. is not going to give up of themselves to make somebody else happy. They're going to try to get their other person to just snap out of it and to deal with whatever's going on. Right. And I guarantee you, had we stayed and tried to do anything... You've been miserable. We probably would have ended up fighting mm -hmm. because I didn't want to be there anymore. And, and I made it a point to stop at all the little parks on the way out so that we could try to take pictures and experience things. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um. And then obviously the scenic loop was a whole ordeal because it's it only it's only 22 miles. Right. But it takes like three hours. Right. But you're going at five miles an hour trying to see birds and alligators and swamp and all that fun stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, you kind of put yourself in a position where you were let down, allowed yourself to be let down. And in return, I put myself in a super uncomfortable position because I needed to go to the bathroom the entire time we were on the scenic loop trail and I couldn't yeah. go. So 
there was an ebb and flow, but that that scenario for me was a, a nice reprieve. Like I I really expected when I was like, hey, I don't want to be here anymore for you to lose your poo and us to really have a big ordeal about everything. And, and you realized how how I was going through it and it just wasn't worth it for, for you to see me going through it the way that it was. Mm-hmm. And we can always take another vacation. Right. And, and I know that, that sounds kind of pompous, but we're in a position where we could do that. If mm-hmm. we wanted to go to St. Augustine right now, you could get on Airbnb and find it in Airbnb while we're driving there. And mm-hmm. we could go spend a week there right now and it wouldn't hurt us financially. Nothing would get set behind. Like we're in a good place. Right. <clears throat> it would affect the podcast, mm-hmm. obviously, as I would not get to edit. But if I had a laptop, it wouldn't we matter. Could. Yeah. And we would realistically be able to do this anywhere because we bought mm-hmm. those lav mics. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that's a very good example of being my piece because you could have made a big deal out of it and you could have made me feel like shit for wanting to leave. You could have made it about right. my borderline. You could have, you know, and those things happen. We go on vacations from time to time and we leave a day or two early if we've planned for a week. Sometimes I'm just ready to go. Mm-hmm. Sometimes there's nothing more to see. Right. You know, sometimes I miss my bed. Yeah. It's just the way it's going to be sometimes. Mm-hmm. And instead of getting mad about it, you just accepted it. You know that there's going to be more vacations. It's not a big deal. I would rather leave <clears throat> and find something else to do than stay there and deal with you being miserable. It's kind of selfish of me to say. I, I don't like dealing with a miserable you. It's not right. fun. Well, I, I don't know how to act myself. I'm not trying to like make you feel bad or I don't anything. feel bad about it at all. Okay. I, I like that you feel that way. Yeah. Because, I mean, you, I benefit from that. Yeah. To be honest, I do. If you don't want to like see me going through it and your want is for me to be happy, so we're going to leave. Mm-hmm. If I want to leave, I benefit from that. Right. I'm not, I don't feel salty about it. Would I rather you be able to enjoy yourself, yourself and have a good time? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I would have loved for the keys to have been a, a memorable thing. Right. It was memorable. Yeah. We won't ever forget it. <laughs> right. But it's not memorable in the way that I wanted it to be, yeah. which is why I was okay with spending eight hours in the car driving a five hour drive home. Mm-hmm. It is what it is, but right. I, I I don't I don't feel any certain way about you saying that at all. I feel like it's a win win <clears throat> situation. Yeah, you're gonna get out of what you want to get out of, and I'm gonna deal with a happier you. Right. It, it's not hard. A lot of people wouldn't do that. When when you really boil it down, everything can be resolved. You're leaving vacation early. Okay, dope. Well, if we're leaving early, we're gonna stop at every single place I want to eat on the way home. That's it. We it's- left early, and I was like, I want to eat at IHOP. And you're like, okay. Yeah. We, you wanted to leave. You told me you wanted to leave. So I told you what I wanted when we were leaving. It's not hard. Yeah. It's really not. Why are you looking at me like that? I just, because I've, I've had experiences in the past where this has happened and it's been a, a huge thing. That's crazy. It is. I mean, it's just life. People want what they want. And sometimes it's easier to be selfish than understanding. Mm-hmm. It is. And, and, and in saying that, I could have been that person that was understanding instead of selfish and just suffered through the day and not said shit. There's going to be days where you're going to have to do it for me. Right. We might be in Vegas and I can look at you and say, I'm having a panic attack being here. I don't want to be here anymore. Right. And we might leave three days early. It'd be a little harder to leave Vegas three days early than the Keys. Right. But it's but just I an would, example. So in that scenario, right, just because you threw that out there, yeah. we wouldn't stay on the strip anymore. I would, we'd stay in the hotel mm-hmm. because the hotels are, are super nice and way expensive. Right. But we would spend the rest of the time in ghost towns and Desert Valley or Death Valley. And like mm-hmm. Vegas is a very good point to go and explore a lot of right. the desert. We just wouldn't do the strip thing. My point of that is you would change whatever the plan is. Absolutely. I would make it work. Like when you told me you wanted to leave... I thought, well, if I came to you and said, I'm overwhelmed, I'm stressed out, I don't want to be here anymore, I hope you would leave and not give me shit about it. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Do to others what you want done to you. It's not, (laughs) I keep saying it's not hard because it's really not hard. And when we were leaving, you even told me you were like, your energy's off. And I was like, well, I'm disappointed. Yeah. And that was another moment because you kind of got defensive. And you were like, well, I thought you said you wouldn't be upset. I wasn't upset. It's okay to be disappointed. The whole trip was a letdown. Right. Leaving early wasn't the big catastrophe of it. The keys was the catastrophe of it. Well, you also made it very clear after we had that moment that you weren't disappointed in me. Right. You were disappointed in the situation, which I was too, so it's understandable. But when you said you were disappointed, I did take it as me because I was waiting for the fight. Yeah. So. That's also a clear thing. Like if someone tells you something and you don't understand, you, you think that they're blaming you, ask them. Yeah. Because in that moment when you got defensive, I was like, oh, no, he thinks I'm blaming him. And that's why I explained myself. Right. It's, it's just communication. That's how I'm your piece. I don't cause fights when there doesn't need to be a fight. 
<clears throat> so that woman said that she feels like she nags too much. So mm-hmm. how? What are, what are you going to do to change that? If if that's how if if she believes that, and I'm asking her this, not you. Mm-hmm. If she believes that she nags too much, I guarantee you he believes that she nags too much. How are you going to fix that? Because you need to learn communication skills, and you need to to learn I statements instead of you statements, mm-hmm. and you need to find ways to communicate with him that's not going to make him feel like you're trying to control him, being disrespectful, don't trust him, whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm to get the things that you want. And we talked about this a lot in uh, actually thinking the four email one. Mm -hmm. If you just say what you want versus trying to give a long blown out description of what you're trying to accomplish, it's a lot easier to get what you want. Mm -hmm. It really is. Yeah. Babe, I want IHOP. Okay. That that was it. Yeah. You know, I was going to say something. I just totally lost it because now I'm thinking about the example I gave yesterday for not giving a drawn out explanation. I hope I said that quietly enough that no one heard it. I, I heard it, but I was also looking at you. I'm trying to think of what you were talking about yesterday with a long, drawn-out explanation. I wanted to take the kids to the beach. Yep. And I came to you and I said, I want to take the kids to the beach today. And you said, okay. And I was like, because I'm taking them to the beach, I'm not going to have time to cook dinner. I want a DoorDash. And you said, okay. That was it. I didn't have to come to you and say, I feel like I'm not spending enough time with the kids. I miss them. I, I think that they might miss me and I'm panicking about it and we need to have quality time and I need to take them to the beach so they know that they love them and... It's too much. Right. I don't need to know all that. I, right. I can I can tell, like for the most part, because we have normal conversations mm-hmm. and I can tell when your energy's off. So I know what you're going through most of the time. Right. Most men don't need that conversation. You ever mm-hmm. watch Dave Chappelle killing him softly stand yes. up? He does that. Mm-hmm. He's like, Bob said this, so I punched him in the face and I broke out. He's like, that's all the information that men need. Mm-hmm. Women will tell a story. Well, you see, it was two o'clock on Sunday and I was on my period, so I was feeling emotional. And he's like, we don't need that information. Right. And there's mm-hmm. humor behind it. Because it's accurate. Mm-hmm. Who, what, when, where, and why. That's it. I don't need all of the irrelevant information. If you feel like you need to tell me, let's have that conversation separate from what I can do to fix whatever's happening. Mm-hmm. And then we can go have fun- lunch and you can tell me everything that you want to tell me while I'm eating. And But if you're trying to get something out of me and you elaborate way past what needs to be said, I'm checking out. Right. I've got too much going on to worry about mm-hmm. all of that. Just tell me what you need. Let me provide it. Right. We're golden. Mm-hmm. I remember what I was going to say. <clears throat> say it. About the nagging. So just a couple couple of scenarios where I can imagine me wanting to nag. Say you're overwhelmed with housework. You know, you're a stay-at-home mom. You handle the kids, everything. You do everything in the house. Your man comes home from work. You want him to do the laundry. And instead of getting shitty about it and say, you never do anything when you're here, go to him and say, babe, I'm overwhelmed. A lot of shit went down today. Can you do the laundry for me? It would really help me out. It would make me really happy. That's all you have to do. Yep. That's it. That last two sentences. Mm -hmm. It would really help me out and it would make me happy. That's it. That's it. That's all you... Try it. Yep. Three times. (laughs) Three times you think of an instance where you want your man to do something. Say, I want... If you could do this because I'm stressed, because I'm overwhelmed. Not even that. Just say it would make me happy. Yep. It would really help me out. It would make me happy. That's all you got to do. He'd be like, okay. You know, I, I say a lot that men are very simple. Mm-hmm. And then I made a, we made the clip and I posted it and somebody was like, how are men simple? Can you explain that one? And I was like, you really need to watch the podcast. Right, like you yeah. need to go to YouTube because we talk about this constantly. Mm-hmm. We very much are a people pleasing when it comes to our woman. We mm-hmm. want to make sure that you've got everything that you need. Real men, Real men want yeah. to provide, protect and lead. Provision is not always financial. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's providing happiness. Sometimes it's providing quality time. Sometimes it's providing parenting. Sometimes it's, why are you smirking at me? Because I walked into the house when I got home from work and I was like, it's me, the light of your life. And you were like, yeah. And I was like, come give me attention. (laughs) You were providing me attention in a moment. I wanted attention because I told you I wanted attention. It's not hard. And it really does come down to the way that you communicate with people. When you first start dating somebody, you don't try to control them. Mm -hmm. You don't. Nobody ever has the relationship in the beginning of a relationship that you have 5, 10, and 15 years into something. Mm -hmm. Because by then you've changed. They've changed. You're now more in control or he's more in control. And somebody may or may not be comfortable with what's happening. Mm -hmm. And things start to fall apart. You have to maintain as you go. I just don't understand why it's so difficult for people to get this. You know, <clears throat> 10 years ago, you would understand why it was so difficult. You think I would? Yeah. I don't think so. 
there's things that you know now about communication you didn't know 10 years ago. Right. But I also know how easy it is for a woman to manipulate a man. Right. I got a leg up because my mom owned escort services when I was a kid. I've watched women manipulate men my entire life. And I, I know their tactics. I'm, I'm hip to the game. <laughs> that was actually a really good point you just made about women manipulating men. Right. Because I've actually, I, I thought about that the other night. I was laying in bed at 2 a.m. And I was like, we could be giving tools to women. We are. Not could. We, we are. are. We're, we are giving tools to women to manipulate men. Yep. And you know, that kind of makes me sad. But in the same breath, I hope that those men don't jump the gun on things. Right. You know, don't have her move in six months into a relationship and provide everything for her right off the bat. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. Get to know her, who she is as a person. I, I really believe like court for a year. And then after a year, maybe start discussing moving in together. Yep. You know, don't these jumping in. Well, we moved in three months after we met. Yeah. Strong serial killer vibes from that. <laughs> it's normal now. That's crazy. That's normal reality for people, especially for people who are not financially um, comfortable. Mm -hmm. I don't want to call anybody broke. Financially right. comfortable. If you're financially embarrassed, it's easier for you to move in with somebody to be a roommate or mm -hmm. to help them or to help each other financially because it makes more sense. Right. Especially if things are going really good. Mm -hmm. But if you're three or four months in, everything is going to be going good. That. I mean, I, have, I haven't heard many people go three months in and go, this, this relationship is garbage. I right. hate that guy. Like, it doesn't happen that way. And mm -hmm. a lot of it's because you're not living together yet. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I don't know. I thought about that manipulation thing, too, and realized that we are, we are giving tools that could help shitty people be more shitty than they already are. Right. And that kind of sucks, but I, I don't think that that's what people are listening to us for. I hope not. We have a lot of people that, that are like, hey, you're saving my marriage. Like, keep doing what you're doing. You're really helping. Mm -hmm. um, fun fact, completely off topic. Okay. When I was talking the other day about how I've given all of this to God and I was getting ready to, I did one of these to let you know I was where I was going with that. What was that? My vape. Oh, I heard a beep. Oh, it was the, okay. It was squeaking. Um, we were talking about this. And talking about TikTok and the emails and how it used to be heavy on us and all that. And, and that conversation was leading to me doing this to let you know where the conversation was going. And AJ was listening to it back and caught it while he was making a clip. He's like, when that sex therapist emailed you and told you that you can use this on the podcast and explained everything that you guys are doing and how amazing you are, you literally just touched the Bible and said, you've, you've given it to God. And I was like, no way. And he time stamped it. And I went back and I was getting to that point and I touched it. And then the email popped up. Shut and up. And then we talked about the email for a minute. And I was like, oh, but anyways, and I continued talking and I finished my thought process of when I did this. It was timing was on it. It, it was um, <laughs> it was the sex therapist video and it was 21 minutes and 30 seconds in. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Blew my mind. I was like, you're full of it, bro. There's no way that that timing lined up like that. And sure enough. I, that's wild that he caught that. Yeah. Yep. Well, he, he knows that I'm religious and we've talked right. about that a little bit. He also should be getting that microphone and camera that I ordered for him today. So okay. hopefully we'll be able to set up um, Riverside as a him as a host mm -hmm. so that he can host and run everything and then he can do everything remotely. We can have our conversations and start getting... I would really like to start interviewing people. That would be dope. There are people on Patreon that I would like to have a face-to-face -face conversation with and they can use Zoom on their phone. Mm -hmm. But we have a lot of people like... Um, I, can I? Do you think I should could say her name? Well, we know Topher's Topher's parents. Um, they've done a lot, yeah. And we now have rapport with them. So mm -hmm. to be able to get the all of them, or just Topher, mom and dad, to sit down and have a fifteen minute conversation with us about how their life has changed over the last five months, mm -hmm. would be super cool. That would be really dope. And, it, and the, there's an ego aspect in that for me. There is. I'm not going to deny that. There is absolutely an ego thing there because I really feel like we've helped give them tools and they took it and ran with it. Mm -hmm. You know, we can't take credit for people's accomplishments. We can only take credit for providing the tools and what they do with them is their decision. Right. You know, if, if you give somebody a little bit of a head start and they build a business, it's not your business. You don't get to take credit for that. You just mm -hmm. get to know that at one point in your life, you help them. Right. And that's an exciting thing, especially mm -hmm. when they, you know, are now a Fortune 500 company or, or whatever the case may be. I, it's exciting for me. Right. <clears throat> and there's not really a reason for me to have an ego in that situation, but my ego itself it's totally mental masturbation. I'm about it. Let's go. <laughs> I get that. You want to get into some emails? Yeah. I'm getting really hungry, and I feel like I'm going to start getting crabby soon. Yeah? Yeah. So you're going to start getting crab ragoon? Crab, yeah. <laughs> yes. So 
I'm not quite sure how to explain it fully, but my husband and I have hit a snag. A bit of background info. He and I have known each other for 23 years, but we've been together for six and a half. He cheated on me within the first year, and of course that hurt me deeply, and I still struggle with it. I'm currently going to therapy to try and work through it with trying to work through it among other oldies. The hits keep on coming. So she means oldie as in like other trauma. Other trauma. Okay. He has only done it the one time. Not sure if that's relevant or not. It is. It's absolutely relevant. It is. Since we have tried to move forward and have grown quite a bit, but over the last year or so, I've struggled a lot with my mental health after being diagnosed bipolar. So that added a lot of stress for me. Okay, pause. Just because you were diagnosed bipolar doesn't mm-hmm. mean that things should be more difficult. Right. You were already bipolar. Somebody just confirmed it. Right. That should actually help. Right. It should actually be a relief because now you know what it is. Right. Now you know how to work against it yep. or to work with it or grow from it. <clears throat> the only thing that I could see becoming an issue at that point is if you are diagnosed and they give you drugs mm-hmm. and that changes your mind. Right. Because that can absolutely affect who you are as a person. But a diagnosis changes nothing. Mm-hmm. All it is is now you have a title so that you can start understanding what makes you tick. Right. You know. I had borderline before they diagnosed me with borderline. Mm-hmm. I just didn't know what it was. And then once I got diagnosed, I could start working on my, my shit to get, become a better person. Right. So <laughs> that was my shoes coming off and dragging them across the floor. I don't know if that got picked up on the microphone or not, but that was funny. I love how that sounded, though. Yeah. That was very rhythmic for me. <laughs> that was nice. This is what Bob Ross meant by happy coincidences. I want to get, I know that, I, know, I don't know if they actually make them. Like what? But it would be really cool. Are you talking about the chia things? A what? The what? Oh. A chia thing? What is a chia thing? <laughs> Nothing. Continue what you're saying. I was going to say it would be nice to have like a mat that's actually like grass that I could put my feet on while we're recording so it would feel like I was walking around in the grass. <laughs> were we at all in the same place? <laughs> they, both, they both involve grass. <laughs> I was thinking of like a Bob Ross Chia statue with the grass growing out and it's his hair. (laughs) (laughs) You got really excited about that. I really. That says a lot about me. (laughs) Happy little trees. I felt the intention of grass. I did not think you were going to go to a mat with it. That's the only way I can explain like how I'm able to like finish your sentences and shit. I can feel what you're about to say. And then you just guess and hope for no, the best. No, it's not that I just guess. That one I definitely guessed because <laughs> I got excited because I was like, oh my God, are we having the same thought? It was grass. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. Okay. Diagnosis. He has been amazingly supportive through everything. I know one of our biggest problem is I don't have much of a sex drive anymore. I try, but it just doesn't happen. So I do my best to help him but he knows I'm not in the mood and it upsets, him, it upsets him because he wants us both to be able to enjoy ourselves. I just don't know what to do or how to fix it. Are you on meds? Maybe. We got to know these things. When you guys right. send us emails, if you've been diagnosed with something and they've put you on medicine, tell us what the medicine is because I could Google it right now while we're having this conversation. Be like, I found your problem. Yeah. It could be meds. Um, it doesn't say how old they are. Right. But they've known each other for 23 years. It could be hormonal. It could be a home run thing. Yep. She could, also 23 said, years could also be a lack, lack of foreplay. It could be lack Look, of intimacy. Looking at someone going, hey, I want to have sex. Take your clothes off. Is, Man, that really got my motor running. <laughs> yeah, right? Let's go. <laughs> That's equivalent to saying go and grab a towel. Right. Ew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it could also be because she mentioned that the cheating is still bothering her. She still struggles with the fact he cheated. In the year one? In year one, and they've been together for almost seven years. Okay. I thought you said they've been together 23. They've known each other for 23 oh, years, okay. but they've been together for six and a half. So he cheated in year one. It's been five and a half years since that happened. He hasn't cheated since. Why are you still struggling with it? Right. This could be just like a massive subconscious thing. Like, are you worried it's your body? Are you, are you obsessing more over it now than you did when it happened? Because if you're obsessing over it more now, you're not going to want to have sex with him. Right. Because all you're focusing on is the fact that he cheated five years ago. You know, that that I also mm. want to point out the fact that just because somebody cheats in a relationship doesn't mean that they're going to perpetually do it. Right. It could have been a one-time thing. Mm-hmm. It could have been the first time ever in their life that they've cheated on somebody. 
it, it could have been a one-time thing. It could have been a side relationship. There could be a whole lot of factors that play into that. But to assume that just because they did it once, they're going to do it over and over and over again, mm-hmm. it makes them sound like an addict of some sort. <clears throat> I just don't, I, I don't know. I know that if intimacy is, is messed up in a relationship, mm-hmm. cheating is more likely on both sides, men and women. Right. So mm-hmm. if the intimacy is in check and everything is going well and things are working, the chances of somebody going outside of the marriage is slim. I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but the percentages go way down because the intimacy is doing what intimacy is supposed to be doing. She said, sorry for the lengthy email as a paragraph. Yeah. <laughs> I think it also matters on when in the first year did he cheat? Was it two months into knowing each other? Right. And that matters. It does matter. You know, it's very common nowadays to where people will see like two or three people at the same time for the first three months. Until things get serious. Right. Yeah. I I disagree with that. I disagree with that too. I hugely disagree with that. I disagree with that too, but that's something that people do. Mm Mm-hmm. We, we've gotten shit over that we because have. I've made videos where I've said, if you're dating somebody and you're you're courting them, it needs mm-hmm. to be only that person. They're like, well, I'm not going to stop seeing other people until I know it's going to get serious. Are, are you kidding me? So are you looking for something serious <clears throat> or are you looking for a good time? Because right. somebody who is looking for something serious is not going to want to be getting with somebody who's seeing two other dudes at the same right. time. Why would I waste my time and potential on you knowing that you're talking to other guys when I can find somebody that's serious about trying to build a life together? Right. Exactly. I'm not, I'm not, I, I, I hate that entire mindset. Mm-hmm. There's not a scenario in my head where that's okay. Right. And other people are going to disagree and it's fine. Your, your wrong opinion is your wrong opinion. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so sass. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't think that it's okay. And if, and if you're not looking for a real relationship and you're just trying to find somebody that can help you level up in life, that's a different scenario than people who are dating because they want a forever Right. They want they want the house with the white picket fence and they want to build a foundation and grow and do the thing. And the older you get, the harder it is to find quality people because they're already gone. Like they're taken already. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I really don't have an answer for how to fix not being in the mood. Get your blood tested. Get your hormones ran. Find out what meds you're taking if you're taking them. <clears throat> find out if there's an underlying issue. If he cheated year one and you guys are seven years in, you got to let that shit go. Yeah, really. Like when you decided to forgive him in that moment, say it was two years, he cheated year one at year two, you're like, okay, I'm, we're going back to whatever we had before in that moment. It's done. Yeah. I, I think it would be done sooner than that. I know that you can't move past hurt. Right. Like you're going to have to deal with that on your own. Um, but when you decide that you're going to try to make things work, knowing that that happened, you have to let go of it. You have to let go of it. And you can't mm-hmm. throw it in their face. You can't make them try to regain your trust. And they should be trying to mm-hmm. be better. But you cannot hold that against them while they're working on it because eventually they're going to get tired of trying to, to better and level while you're constantly throwing that shit at them. It's like playing Donkey Kong. Right. Then barrels are going to hit your ass eventually. Like, mm-hmm. just can't do that. <clears throat> I don't really have anything else to say. I don't either. I don't like long, uh, short emails. I think from moving forward, if the, the email is only two paragraphs or less, we should just delete it. Okay. What's the next one? Um, traditional values. Hello, I am 34 years old. and I'm a stay at home mom who has been with my fiance, who is 33 years old for going on 16 years or something like that. Okay. So they, they were like high school sweethearts. Yeah. That's dope. I'm emailing you to let you know how much you both have encouraged me to continue to look at myself and the things I need to keep working on to keep the relationship and household going smoothly. I love that. You know, I actually don't think this one's a question. Fuck it. Read it. Oh, screw it. Read it anyways. It's twice. You caught it. Yeah, but I didn't catch it before it left my mouth. Right, but the corrections you're making is going to help you correct. (sighs) Stop saying it. I, I, I truly feel... Like I lack intelligence because mm-hmm. of the way that I cuss and I know that it bothers me and I still can't do it. It's it's like writing a comma. Right. The F bomb just drops like it's part of my normal grammar. I it takes can't, up space. It does. That's all it does. I hate it. When I first met my fiance, we were teenagers and I was brought up to be extremely independent and to basically hate men. Crazy. Same. <laughs> it's crazy how that's an ongoing theme. I was waiting on you to be like, same. <laughs> <laughs> Same. That's not a joke. It is the same though. Yeah. <laughs> My father was an absolute shit human, abusive, drug addict, pedophile. Didn't see that coming, did you? <laughs> 
so I said absolute shit human and I kept reading. So I wasn't realizing what I was reading. Cause I was like, Oh no, did I say the F word? <laughs> Cause like I was trying to think back and then the word left my mouth and then I heard me say it and I was like, wow. That was a lot. Holy shit. Growing up, I recently just, uh, I'm all flustered. That infuriates me. Yeah, I know. We, we Guys, when you guys also send these emails, if there is essay or anything that has to do with children being abused, please cut that out. We don't want to hear it. Like that's one of those things that we can't address that right. and help that. And and both of our view mm -hmm. is the, the only good pedophile is a dead pedophile. And I don't care what anybody says. I don't care what you believe in. I don't care what your political standpoint lies. Right. Children are off limits, mm -hmm. period. If, if I would have seen <clears throat> that word before I said it, I wouldn't have said it. I'm sorry. It's okay. Growing up, I really distrusted men in general and I had a lot of horrible experiences with so many of them that I put up guard for a very long time to the point where at first I didn't treat my fiance good at all. Thankfully, we have grown and things are so different now. I worked three jobs, sometimes four, and he couldn't really hold a job down and didn't want to work at all. He wanted to make music instead. And for a long time, I almost belittled him for having a dream that I thought was stupid and had my family telling me how naive it was for him to think that he could be a musician and looking back how much that hurt him and I feel awful. I have a whole lot to talk about there. That's rough. I'm I'm surprised he stayed. Uh, I, so <laughs> I have a lot to talk about. There about is that. a lot there, but my first immediate feeling is I cannot imagine being a man who's like trying to make something happen for myself. And then my girl and her whole family is just shitting on me about yeah. it. <clears throat> so negativity bias from her, her family. Right. That's a problem. Mm -hmm. That's a big problem. Yeah. And, and being in that position, I'm sure it made him not want to be around her family which probably made things even more strained because he knows mm -hmm. that her family feels that way. I'm sure that being young, she she threw her family under the bus to him so that he was aware of all of that. So that's a problem. But as somebody that is a, a an artist, a professional artist, mm -hmm. because that's what a musician is, they're an artist, I have made a... Good job. Phenomenal. That <laughs> I was, was looking, great. <laughs> that was great. I have made a phenomenal living off of my art. Right. Uh, we we are very comfortable because of my businesses and the things that I've done artistically. Mm -hmm. What if that dude would have actually been like the next, you know, Jimi Hendrix, right, or Stevie Ray Vaughan, or somebody that's just you know a guitar legend, and he'd never never pursued it because everybody around him was shitting on him. That sucks. Mm -hmm. You you should support people when they have artistic dreams. Obviously, they need to work. You need to be able to support your family while still trying to create your art foundation dream or whatever it is that you're doing. Right. But you should never give that up. If you're a musician and you think that you could actually do something music wise, even if it's not on like a, a you know world stage, mm -hmm. maybe you write scores for movies, or maybe you're a lyricist and you start writing songs and you start selling music to I don't know who I don't know who's popular right now. I don't listen to music anymore, but to mm -hmm. whoever. You know, you write a song and Jelly Roll hears the lyrics and goes, oh my God, that's amazing. And then buys your song from you and puts it on an album. And now other people that that felt the pain of that song wants to buy your, your lyrics. <clears throat> that should be a thing. You should never squash that. And right. when kids want to draw, every kid mm -hmm. thinks they're an artist. Mm -hmm. Their art is garbage. But you don't ever tell them, that sucks. Go start over. Right. You're like, oh my God, that's amazing. How about doing this with the eye next time? And then you teach them something about art. So the, now they, they have that thought process. Yeah. Oh my God, you colored in the lines, but the tree is purple. Let's do brown like the trunk next time so it looks a little more realistic. And then they do it. And you'd be like, now take this pen and draw little cracks in it to make the bark look like bark. And by the right. time they're seven years old, the kids are actually artistic because you've you've watered that seed mm -hmm. and you've pushed them and told them how amazing they are. And they, they believe in themselves. Right. As people grow up, the school gets that out of you. Mm -hmm. No more imagination. No more free thinking. You do what you're told. Remember this. Remember that. You'll never be anything more than you are. Go work in that factory. And, and as we become 20, 25 years old, all the dreams that we had as a child is destroyed by everyone that we've ever looked, to, looked up to in our life. And that, that bothers me. That bothers <laughs> On me. a personal level. I like I want to get emotion. Yeah. yeah. You know, so she said that she worked three, sometimes four jobs, and he couldn't hold a job down and didn't want to work. Right. That bothered me, too. That bothers me. Because <clears throat> you can do both. It, that you can do both. Is he not wanting to work because he's putting all of his time and energy into making this work? 
Like, was it already working at that time? And he's trying to get it more off the ground. Mm -hmm. If you get into a relationship with somebody and they're up front and they're like, hey, I'm trying to pursue this. Like, you guys are together. You're living together. And they're like, I want to quit my job and I want to pursue this. Yep. If you agree to that, you can't complain that about supporting them. Right. If you were like, dope, go follow your dreams. I can hold us down. Great. But then you can't belittle them for saying, well, you never work. You don't contribute. Right. And if it needs to be reevaluated in like a year, like nothing's happening, that's when you say, you know, it's been a year. I'm kind of struggling maintaining the bills on my own. Can you get a job and just kind of do this on the weekends? Right. It's not hard. Well, in that same breath, if they are actually working to accomplish those things, you mm -hmm. would see in that year that they're working to accomplish those things, right. not just doing band practice once a week and going to the bar on the weekend and playing a gig. Yeah. They're spending all of their <clears throat> their free time mm -hmm. marketing, graphic design, building a studio in the house, recording, writing lyrics, doing all the things that they're doing, and it is a full-time job. Right. Not mm -hmm. just the on the weekend thing while you know I smoke weed and play video games during the week while you work. Mm -hmm. Because I know a lot of musicians who are musicians and that's been their life. Yeah. But we uh well we both know people who actually are very were big in the music industry for a while. I had a friend that used to play the warp tour every year. Mm -hmm. Um I have a guy that works for me that was really big into music that actually had his own line of guitar picks and shit. Like it, it was a big deal for him. Yeah. But I got to see that work ethic and how much of that went into it because it was a full time job. <coughs> While he had a full time job, it was never just a, a cool thing to do. It's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to support that and you see them not doing the work, then you know that that's not really what they want. They're just using that as an excuse to not work. Right. So if he was not working and he was doing all of that extra shit to try to, to make it, mm -hmm. it is a full time job. It doesn't yeah. feel like a full time job of, of luxury because you're not making money. Starving artist is a thing, mm -hmm. but it's no different than a tattoo apprenticeship where they spend a year not getting paid eight hours a day in a studio, drawing, answering phones, cleaning, and doing all that shit so that down the, the road they can make a hundred grand a year tattooing. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the starving art, I, I have a, a soft spot in my heart for that. That really, <clears throat> I could talk about that for hours. Yeah. There's a lot of backstory I'm skipping. Because we were toxic for a very long time. He didn't really know how to treat a woman. Not either because his mom is an alcoholic who is just so messed up and he has his faults to a degree and would say some harsh stuff out of anger. So really neither of us were very good at communicating. Now he saw through my anger and showed me so much love and broke down the guards I put up and saw something in me I didn't see in myself. In reality, I hated myself and took it out on him because I didn't know how to be a better person for a long time. It was almost like we were both trying to show each other who the other was, if that makes sense, because he also hated himself. I like that she just took accountability. Yeah, they both did. That's great. We get a lot of emails. It's mainly from women. Men don't really email us. Yeah. It's mainly from women who only shit on their husbands. That's, you're actually, the questions mm -hmm. are mainly from women. A lot of the success stories were like, hey, you guys have helped my marriage or for men. That's true. Yeah. yeah. That's so wild. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. But it's very rare that we get an email from a woman who actually takes full right. of self-accountability of, I was a really shitty person. Yeah. I like that she acknowledged that they were both toxic to each other. Yeah. And she says was, mm -hmm. not is, you know, which means they did some of the work. Yeah. All right. So they've talked about what it was like for them to grow up in city, shitty situations with zero guidance. And before I got, before I was pregnant and before our daughter was born, he became a different person entirely. He started taking his career seriously to the point that he makes amazing money and has been with his company for about nine years now and he is absolutely great father and plays music again and has become such an amazing human and watching him take the lead and show me that not all men are pieces of shit changed the entire way of think changed my entire way of thinking. Good on him for stepping up. That's dope. Good on him for picking his music back up. Yeah. It was really hard at first letting someone else take the lead and it still makes me nervous some days, but I trust him to make the best decisions for us and him and I talk about everything before making any big decisions now. I came across your TikToks and then started to watch you both on YouTube and I'm really just emailing you both to say thank you. You are helping me and him continue to be better. That makes me happy. Yeah, me too. I have taken a lot of advice and given I have taken a lot of the advice given and changed a few more of the things in our daily life and it's made a difference. 
I realized my role <clears throat> being at home and taking care of everything here makes his job easier and started to make a schedule to have better time management skills. For a while, I felt myself getting a bit bitchy over some really non-central stuff, like him coming home and needing to decompress. He's a plumber and it's a lot of manual labor. Can we pause for a minute? Mm-hmm. So b- blue collar job. Yeah. If he works with a team of people, mm-hmm. the conversations that you have with your coworkers are not conversations that you want to have at, at home. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to say this is going to be vulgar. Yeah. But I, I've worked blue collar jobs. I've done roofing. I've done landscaping. And it is not an uncommon thing to call your friends cocksuckers. Right. And all kinds of other really nasty shit. And it's mm-hmm. purely out of love and admiration because that's the kind of people and the way that you talk. If I came home and talked to you like that, it would destroy our family. <laughs> you can't do that. And, yeah. and people don't realize that when you work in a blue collar field, that is absolutely normal. Mm-hmm. So that decompression time is necessary. It's also a good way to, to go from I have to work and figure out problems and do things to I'm home. I right. can be soft. I can be around my family. I can be a dad. Mm-hmm. That decompression time is absolutely necessary. And I get a lot of people like, well, that's what your drive home is for because I made a TikTok about it and got ripped apart. Well, why don't you just use that drive home? Well, what if you only live five minutes from work? Right. What if you get stuck in traffic? Mm-hmm. What if your boss calls you on the way home? There could be a whole lot of what ifs. Mm-hmm. So that drive home does not count as decompression time because you're still technically on the clock. You're driving around doing this shit out in public. You're not home yet. Right. I I, I appreciate emails like this. Me too. I, I really do. I'd like to know some of the things that they implemented. I wish that they would have included that. Well, like, we're not done with it. Oh, I thought you were done reading. No. Well, proceed, sir. Well, I just want to, I just, I laughed because you said if you came home and t- spoke the way that you spoke to other mm people on your job site or whatever it would destroy the family and I I laughed because I was on a team of men doing physical labor right and I know exactly the way that they talk and the thought of you coming home and saying something like that to me I'd probably just say something back right (laughs) but that's not most people right it's just it made me chuckle I know how foul it gets it's bad yeah it's fun most most men most real men live their life like that. Right. It's no different than young boys wrestling to just try to one up each other. So somebody on a job site is going to say something really off the wall, mm-hmm. and somebody's going to one up them, and then somebody else is going to one up them, and then the, the, the you know the the superior on the job site is going to go, oh yeah, well blah blah blah, and it's going to make it even worse. And then once he gets involved, all all hands on deck. Oh yeah. That's now it. it's okay. <laughs> everyone can say the most foul, evil things they can say, and everyone laughs about it. It's normal. Yeah. <clears throat> but you can't do that shit at home. You know, could you imagine coming home and talking to your kid like that? <laughs> right? No. <laughs> <laughs> I I can't imagine talking to you like that though. Yeah. 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 I would laugh about it. This week's going to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> Game on. Game on. All right. So, but after listening to you guys talk about how important it is to deep to, for the decompression time, mm-hmm. And helping me see that it does help him transition better to being home, in a way, kind of shut me up. (laughs) It just makes sense to me now, and I realize I would be the same way if I went back to work. So now when he comes home, he gets right in the shower and sits down in our room for a little bit until dinner is done. I like that she said it made her shut up. (laughs) Yeah, without knowing anything, I'm willing to bet that he would come in and she would start right away. Oh, yeah. Kids have been bad. Dinner's not done yet. The stove doesn't work. The light bulb went out. The bank called. Mm-hmm. Doc, you got a doctor appointment tomorrow morning. You need new glasses. Those boots have a hole in them. You need new socks. Get some fucking underwear. What's wrong with you? Ooh, F-bomb. Yeah. <coughs> you know, we don't mm-hmm. want to hear that shit. We need time to like ease into it. Right. You, it's foreplay. Give mm-hmm. us foreplay. <laughs> <laughs> I started to compliment him more, and I noticed him smiling and having confidence. That just makes me so happy to see. And I would compliment him, but not as frankly as not as frequently as I should have. And since he's been doing the same, and it's made us both feel a bit of our spark has come back. Submission, outside of the bedroom, is something I'm still working on and will continue. And any more advice on that would be greatly appreciated. I know there's so much more I could go into because my life has been like a Lifetime movie. Love that comparison. <laughs> Love Lifetime. Ugh. I want a cheese plate and wine, and I just want to watch Lifetime in the hot tub. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we could totally put a TV on that back porch. Absolutely could. This is really going to be a good week. We're going to have so much fun. (laughs) I'm really excited for this. Okay. I can get a a lifetime movie, but I won't sit here and write you guys a 500 page book, 
but just know you are helping people or at least the ones who want to listen. And I think it's important what you guys are talking about and can only hope that younger couples can take some of your tips and avoid the chaos that was the first five to six years of our dating. So seriously, thank you. So we, um, our theme this week has been intimacy. It has. That has been the biggest talking point in all of our emails and all of our, our conversations. And she regained intimacy mm -hmm. simply by, by throwing him compliments, being a little more understanding and not nagging. They regained intimacy like that. And yeah. I'm willing to bet she didn't even realize that that's happened. Mm -hmm. And now that the intimacy is back in the home because she took control, everything is better. That's it. Yep. Intimacy is not just sex. It's not. Stop it. So you want to know how we were just talking about independency? <laughs> yeah. Someone just emailed us with the title independence. Yeah? Yeah. No, we can, I'll write that down just That's in crazy. case we get to that one. What's the next one? Uh, need help working on questions. Okay. Uh, you said independent? Yes. I love that last email. That was a good email. It was a good email. I love that. You know, we, we talk about it a lot, but the surrendered wife, or was it the empowered wife? The, uh, one they're of the both, two. They're both very good reads. It's one of the two. Specifically say that the woman holds the key in the relationship. <clears throat> yeah, that was the empowered she, wife. She controls the dynamic of everything, the house, the relationship, all of it. And call it being the bigger person. I will always be the bigger person. That means that my marriage has intimacy and happiness, right. all of it. Why would you want to do anything that's going to ruin your day? Right. It's like, I'm, I'm going to go kick that curb with no shoe on and stub my toe just to oh. do it. Just, just screw it. Let's ruin the day. Ugh. It would be so gritty. <clears throat> that's, that's where my mind goes when people intentionally self-sabotage their relationship. Okay. Next email. I just really went through it over here. Mm -hmm. Like I felt my gag reflex and there was like a tingles that just went down my whole body thinking about the curb. Hate that you said that. Hi, Chris. I need your male insight. And Chris, I need your feminine finesse for wording. I think I'm going to start going by peaches. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry, this is long. I want to give as much info as possible. Is it actually long? Five paragraphs. Okay. Long-ish. Ish. We've received longer. 9,000 words so far as the top. <clears throat> I need to ask a question to my man about how he feels in regards to my injury and recovery plan and don't know how to ensure I get his honest answer. Backstory, I injured my ankle. Don't recall what happened. It just hurt after a walk. He was not with me for the walk. And it took months to figure it out. I destroyed the connective and soft tissues all around my ankle and now require surgery as constructive recovery methods have failed. That sounds terrible. Yeah, they're probably going to pin her ankle together. <clears throat> Currently using crutches. And yes, it does hurt, <clears throat> but my tolerance is high. So there's only been three or four days of extreme pain that has brought me to tears but nothing his touch couldn't help ease. That was sweet. <laughs> Since the mention of surgery, he has become extremely careful, protective, and apologetic around me, but mostly only when we were out in public. Behind closed doors, he is the same man I fell in love with over a decade ago. Five years ago, last year, and tomorrow. But in front of others, I don't know if... It's that he feels judged by them because he can't protect me or he couldn't protect me or worse. When I was seeing various specialists, I was asked by one of them if I feel safe in my relationship. This is because they have, list they have listed it as blunt force trauma injury, meaning we have no clear cause, but it's significant. I don't hide anything from him and at the time didn't think anything of telling him what happened during the appointment. However, looking back, I believe this was the start of his additional protective nature almost a guilty conscious again in private. He is 100% him and almost forgets about my injury, which is great because natural pain reliefs anyways. Oh, she's talking about sex. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, your ankle hurts here. Rested on my shoulder. <laughs> That's so thoughtful. Put a little pillow up there too. get, get a little, ankle you would pillow. need to do that. I got traps. You know this is going to be a clip. That's all I'm thinking about. I can't <laughs> stop. <laughs> it won't turn off. Oh, man. I'm seeing it like a movie. Is it a lifetime movie? A good one, yeah. Yeah. Where somebody else is eating cheese and wine and, and watching? I would hope so. 
Like, I want you living your best life while watching mine. <laughs> <clears throat> wow. Before you get back into that, um, I'm, I'm willing to bet that a lot of this is her perception of the situation. Maybe. Because of the, the way that he treats her outside of the home versus the way he treats her inside of the home. If, if you were injured and we were out of the house, I would absolutely be more protective of you. Right. There's external threats. You can't mm -hmm. run. You can't walk. There's a whole lot of things that play into that. And if you view it as he sees it as a problem instead of he sees it as his job to keep you safe, mm -hmm. your negative perception of the situation is going to give it a negative undertone versus a positive one. That's a really good point. I also want to bring up, she said that she was asked, does she feel safe in her relationship by a physician because right. of the label of whatever. She thinks that that's when it changed. He Was he there for the appointment? Did he... They, they wouldn't ask that question in no, front they, of him. No, they wouldn't have. They would have made him leave the room. So she told him that that question was asked. Mm -hmm. Why is that pertinent information to an appointment about your doctor or your ankle? Right. I, I would have admitted that. I wouldn't have brought that up. Right. So is this like a subconscious thing? Do you do you not feel safe? Do you need to blink twice if you need me to call someone? Are you talking about me? It was a joke. Oh. It's like now I can't blink because someone <laughs> in the comments is going to be like, she blinked twice. He's holding her hostage. <laughs> And I already blink a lot. I've noticed it. Don't misconstrue that, guys. We've gotten three more emails since we started recording. Wow. When he asks me what I think or how I feel about this, I tell him wholeheartedly I feel extremely positive with my medical team and that I'm okay with what has to come. The waiting game is what sucks. When I tell him, when I ask him how he feels, he says he's worried about the surgery part, but he's glad that she's comfortable with the team. I don't want to come across as nagging because it uh, never gets honest answers and there's no point to it. We are able to have very deep and brutal honest conversations and debates and once it's over, we move on. No dwelling unless we specifically say to be continued. So to talk about this should be easy. I want to know what he thinks and respect his input. If something feels off to him or he isn't sure what I want or if he isn't sure if something feels off to him or he isn't sure I want to no need to know so we can work together to find a solution. Does that sometimes make sense to you? Um, I, I don't know. This this doesn't make sense to me. I, I believe that a lot of this is more of a her problem than him problem. It sounds like anxiety. Yeah, that's exactly what it sounds like. Because she just said they're great with communication. They can have long, in-depth conversations and everything is fine and they can like bear their souls to each other. Right. I th okay, so I believe that. Mm -hmm. I also know that men have a harder time with illness surgeries than women do mm -hmm. because we are helpless in anything right there's we, nothing you can do we can't do the surgery mm -hmm. we can't heal it for you there is a layer of oh oh god oh god oh god in prayer and all of that when somebody gets sick around us because we can't do anything mm -hmm. so that's a very real thing and he could be going through that and i think it's so hard for guys because you're hardwired <clears throat> to fix things right and we're also not allowed to be vulnerable right so we're supposed to be stoic and be this hard man while we're watching someone we love suffer and go through something and there's nothing we can do about it. Mm -hmm. So him being overprotective when you're out in public is good. It is. That answers her next question. Okay. I don't know if this is a normal gentleman reaction. Yes, yes it is. <laughs> Asking advice from friends or family is out of question because it, cause as it is, cause as it is, some have a hard time understanding our dynamic and it's honestly none of their business. However, asking an anonymous couple who share values is a okay. I agree. Do they have a dom sub relationship? Is that what I just heard? No, I think it's that they have a traditional relationship. Oh, okay. I heard some. I I, I was kind of zoning because AJ sent me a message about deleting a duplicate that he uploaded, and I was reading she that. She said, while "Understanding you our dynamic." Dynamic. Okay, that's what it was. So yes, it is a very normal reaction for him to be more protective in in public. Right. Because you are now out of commission. You can't run. If a shooter happens, if there's a mass shooting, you can't get away as quick as you could if you were healed. Right. So now he is on high alert for any situation that could happen because now he has to be prepared to carry your ass yep. <laughs> to make sure you are safe. I, I don't think you guys understand. Let me, give me one second. Uh, if they have a traditional value relationship or a traditional marriage, the way that we have a traditional marriage, that is the top of my priority list is to keep you safe. Right. So much so that it doesn't matter where we're at. Mm -hmm. 
if we go somewhere and you go inside of a building, I'm going. And I will stand outside of a bathroom, you know, 10, 15 feet from the door until you get out to make sure that nobody grabs you or gropes you or says anything inappropriate. And you can call that overprotective or whatever, whatever negative term you want to put on that. That's my job. I would rather have you do that than be sex trafficked. Right. I'm sure you would. Nobody wants to be, you know, grabbed. Right. Addicted to drugs, sent overseas to be used. Mm Mm-hmm. Why the easiest way to keep somebody safe is to remove them from the possibility of harm. Yeah. So I, I'm taking those steps. Mm-hmm. He's doing the same thing by making sure that she is okay because she's injured. Right. This is new territory, and all I can think of is your motorcycle talk. And Chris, meaning you, your what-if scenario running through your head on why you don't think it's safe for Chris to get one. I feel this is that what-if for us right now. I did something and got hurt without him around. And any advice would be great on how to have a frank yet open and productive conversation or start or start of a few conversations would be appreciated. The only thing I'm worried about in all of this is the grocery shopping. Our major haul pre-surgery will be in order because my man fails at grocery shopping, which is his kryptonite and we both know it. That means you're doing a good job as a woman though. Yeah. Because you're supposed to be there to, to, to do his weaknesses. Yeah. That, that's teamwork. He's excellent at pushing the cart and not running into <clears> me. <throat> Obviously, surgery is scary, but I'm not seeing just anyone. We, my team, are handpicking the surgeon so everyone is on the same page. And the recovery will be a solid, cohesive machine. Much There's res- also going to be physical therapy that yes. has to happen afterwards. There's mm-hmm. going to be downtime where you're not allowed to walk. And then once you're able to walk, there's going to be downtime before you're able to exercise. Mm-hmm. Um, as somebody who's had major reconstructive surgery, it, it's a process. It's not going to be quick. There's going to be a lot that plays into that. And if you think he's a mess now, wait until your surgery. Mm-hmm. Do you remember when you had your surgery? I do. I was a mess. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm going to be honest. The first week, I really don't remember anything. Well, yeah, you were on a lot of meds. I was. I, I was also <clears> sleeping <throat> a lot. But I did everything in the house. You did. And like, I was genuinely concerned about everything. I'm like, hey, did you take your meds? Did you drain your tubes? Did you do this? Did you do that? And I'm, I'm glad that you don't remember it. It makes me feel kind of good <laughs> that you don't remember it because I was annoying as shit with making sure that everything was taken care of. Yeah. Because I wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to lose my woman mm-hmm. to some freak accident or infection. There's a lot of, of concern that plays into all of that. Right. So she said she needs to have a conversation with him about the fact that she was hurt while he wasn't there. Why does that need to be a conversation? So she went for a walk that he was not with her. Did you decide to go on a walk without him? Was he in the middle of doing something and you got impatient and went on your own? Did he decide not to go with you? Like, There's a lot that goes into that because with her wanting to have a conversation about the fact that I got hurt and you weren't there, either he's feeling guilty because he wasn't there or you're feeling like you're not protected because he wasn't there. And from what it sounds like, it sounds like he's he's good on his end a little bit. It really sounds like you're kind of just struggling with the fact that you got hurt. He wasn't there. Now you're worried. He feels like like he's less of a man or could you get hurt when he's not home because now you're injured? Like if he has to go to work. Well, she also got hurt while walking. Right. It's not like she wasn't rock climbing. Mm -hmm. Somebody didn't knock her over. She didn't fall off of a bicycle. Like she's doing something she's done her entire life and it hurt her ankle. Now, if there's more to that story that we don't know about, obviously we didn't get that information. Right. But that could have happened in your house. Mm -hmm. He could have been watching TV and you could have taken a step in the kitchen and hurt your ankle. Right. That's, you know, freak accidents happen. Like Mm -hmm. you you can't control that. Eventually all of our bodies are going to betray us. It's just going to happen. Yeah. So this could have been something that could have been a problem for decades before it finally let go. Yeah. It could be degenerative. It could be a lot of things. We, you know what I mean? There's not a whole lot of information as to what the injury actually is Mm -hmm. other than the inside is basically gone and it's got to be reconstructed. (coughs) <coughs> so if he feels guilty that you hurt yourself while walking and he wasn't there for it, he needs to be reminded that literally could have happened. You could have like got up off the toilet and hurt your ankle. Right. That could have happened anywhere. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter if he was there or not. That was a, uh, you were walking. <laughs> right. I don't know what to say on that one. <coughs> yeah. I, I don't know. I'm really feeling like this is definitely a her thing because she brought up the fact that <coughs> you don't want me you would prefer me to not get a motorcycle and ride around by myself. Right. I'm safer with you there or multiple people on bikes around me. Well, in that scenario, yeah. Right. But that's because other people don't see motorcycles. Right. That's not because I stepped on a rock and rolled my ankle. Right. 
But then she goes on to say, I feel this is that what if with us right now. I did something and got hurt without him around. Those aren't those aren't the same situation. Mm-hmm. Not even not even a little bit. I'm really just feeling like this is her anxiety going. She says she feels good about everything and everything is dope, but really you don't feel good about everything. Right. I, that's, this that, is your hang up. That's where I would start my conversation. Yeah. I would tell him I'm having anxiety for the first time ever in my life about this. Mm-hmm. And that you need reassurance and tell him to be honest with you. Yeah. And just let the conversation flow. He's obviously not bad at communicating. You guys Mm -hmm. have had those crazy in-depth conversations. I just, I don't know. You can even go into it and say, this might be totally irrational of me right now, but it has been eating at me. Yeah. And just say, I got hurt and you weren't there. That's it. Now, if you need him to say, I'll go on walks with you from now on. You can just say, you weren't there and I got hurt. That scares me. That's all that needs to be said. Does that make sense? It does. You're just just, looking at me. Because she hurt herself walking. (laughs) Something that we, everybody does every day, as long as you're capable of doing so. Like Mm -hmm. you can't, you can't hold that against him. That's not a him problem. Like if you, if you were walking or running and somebody grabbed you and he wasn't there, that's a conversation you can have. Yeah. But in that, at that point, like that's also a risk. Mm -hmm. That's why I go in the gas stations with you. I know that that's a risk. So in the event that I know that it's a risk and you go in the gas station and somebody grabs you, that's a me problem because I knew that that was a risk and I allowed that shit to happen. Right. If I didn't know what I know about gas stations and something happened and I didn't know any better, Mm -hmm. it's not really a me problem. Like now we're aware. Now we know. Now we can address it moving forward. But people, I don't know. I just, the injury itself is what I'm hung up on because people walk everywhere. It happens. I just don't. I don't understand why this is a problem and maybe it's just because I'm not in the situation or because I don't have enough information, but I, I, I really truly don't understand why this is an issue. I agree. It doesn't make sense to me. I really feel like it's anxiety. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. Now what? <coughs> I mean, we're only an hour in. We can do uh, independent if you'd like. They just emailed. We can take a break order some food, and then come back. I would love to do that because I'm starving. All right, let's take a break. So we just had lunch. We did. We we took a little break, decided we were going to come back and do some recording uh, to to continue the podcast. So while you're looking for our next two or three emails, because we're only an hour in, um, I would like to read a comment that we just got on YouTube because I thoroughly enjoyed the mental image that I got from reading it. Um, So we made a video where we were talking about how um, it's not our duty to fix other people. Mm -hmm. It's not a man's job to fix his new girlfriend from past man's trauma. And AJ being the wizard that he is made a clip out of that segment and threw it online and made it a clickbaity title. And this comment started calm and then ended in all caps. And then the follow-up comment was also in all caps. And all I can picture is the, the meme where the person's typing. Right. And the fingers go, then the nubs go and then the hands go and they're using their elbows because they're so angry. (laughs) And I thoroughly enjoyed that. <clears throat> and then it dawned on me while reading it, this person has never count, taken accountability for themselves ever in their entire life. Mm-hmm. And I'm basing that solely on this comment. Okay. <clears throat> Let's get into this comment. It's not on the men to fix anyone. It's about being treated with respect and not playing around with someone's life. And in some cases, children. First, that person whom you are speaking about has been destroyed from a man that hurt her. Why would you say it's a man's responsibility not to fix this? Because for a man or men, that's the advantage. It's their fault. I think you nailed that. (laughs) One time, someone threw a rock and hit me in the face when I was like 12. Okay. It's everyone's duty for the rest of my life to atone for that sin. I'm not accepting anything less from now on. When you meet me, you are going to say, sorry about that guy that hit that rock in your face when you were 12. I just want to take responsibility for that because I am I share a, a species with them. Get the fuck out of here. I, I don't <clears> like... <throat> I don't like this. No? No. Why not? Just people's mentalities. Yeah. I don't like it here. I really think you nailed that. That was actually really impressive. I thought you were about to tell me to start over. <laughs> Why? 
<coughs> because you said you didn't like it. Oh no, I just excuse me, can't breathe. That's how I, I read these emails. Right. When and, and like so we find it funny when people get offended. Yeah. We do. Like there's not a whole lot of things out there that I think are off off limits when it comes to jokes, other mm-hmm. than like kids. Right. So when I do or say something that really upsets someone and they can't objectively step back and go, why is this bothering me so much and really understand what's being had, I find that shit funny. Mm -hmm. I just do. I think it's why I enjoy Bill Burr so much. Yeah. I I don't know. (laughs) One thing that really stuck out to me in that comment, she said that men take advantage. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Women never do that. Right. They could never. You just accept (sighs) the fact that, that people, humanity as a whole is a parasite. We constantly, as women, not saying I do this, I I used to do this, but women constantly make jokes about using men for free meals. Right. That's taking advantage. You know, there's a name for that. What is it? Um, My brain just shut off. There's a name for it. That scenario has become so popular that it made a news segment. What? And then it ended up on TikTok and on YouTube and all over the place. And I want to say it was like a foodie. Foodie's probably not the right word. But it is, it is a scenario where women set up a date for every night of the week so that they can go get a meal and a man will have to pay for it. And they don't have to pay for dinner anymore. There's a, a term for it. And you can Google it or, or look for it later. I, I can't remember the name of it. But there's an actual term for that. And it made it onto the news. That's, that's how prevalent that is in our society right now. That's absolutely insane to me. <clears throat> yep. You know, if, if you want to, <clears throat> if you're only going out with men to get free meals, which is taking advantage. Yeah, absolutely. It really is. If it's the same man over multiple dates, not only are you taking advantage of, a, of his wallet, you're taking advantage of the fact that he's thinking something's going to come of this. Right. One second. So first, I want to start by saying... Is that in the email? No. Oh, okay. I fucked up. <laughs> first, I want to start by saying thank you. Thank you for dealing with the trolls. Those of us who have greatly benefited from your honesty and information outnumber the keyboard keyboard. Warriors. I appreciate that. I appreciate that too. A little bit of acknowledgement feels good. That's nice. As I have commented previously, I started watching you on TikTok because I was intrigued by your traditional marriage. Then the content seemed to move to the communication aspect of your marriage, which I am most grateful for. My husband and I have always been able to trace arguments back to the lack of communication. I would bet a lot of money that if every single um, couple sat down and really traced it back, there was a breakdown in communication. I would I would be willing to bet almost all of that too. Mm-hmm. Because when it comes down to it, most people don't know how to communicate. Yeah. And most people don't realize that what they hear and what it act- is actually being said are not always the same thing. And it's important to go, wait a minute, this right. is what I heard. Is that what you meant? Mm-hmm. That's a big deal. Yep. We have always been good at communicating, but life happens. Yes, it does. Kids and jobs and schedules. After an argument when the dust settles, we always realize life has happened and that we stopped communicating. I'm looking forward to implementing a lot of what you shared into our marriage. I'm sending this because you have been so open about your mental health. I'm hoping that you might be able to help or point me in a good direction. A little background, my husband is 10 years older than me. I love that for you. (laughs) This year, we will be 40 and 50, and this August, we will have been together for 17 years and married for 15. We had very different upbringings and life experiences. For a lack of better terms, He was the wild child, and I was the good girl. We talked before marriage about wanting biological children and also wanting to foster or adopt. We were were never able to get pregnant. However, we did become foster parents for about about 10 years ago. Eight years ago, our forever children came to us as a foster placement. They were six and two at the time. My son is now 14, and my daughter turned 10 today. They are half siblings, same mom, but different dads. Bio mom had an extremely low IQ with no support system, borderline personality disorder, domestic violence, drugs, and failure to protect the children. My son was diagnosed with bipolar disorder right right before the adoption was finalized. I got a concussion from him. He was placed on a 5150 hold by the police department and was sent to a hospital in an ambulance for a psych hold. The courts actually postponed terminating her parental rights because they thought we could We would change our minds about adopting due to his mental health diagnosis. It was the opposite, of course. We wanted to move forward as quickly as possible so we could advocate for him the way parents should 
to get him whatever he whatever help he needed instead of people who see him for maybe 30 minutes a month making those decisions. I was the recipient of most of his behaviors because he was angry and mom wasn't around to take his anger on, take his anger out on and because he felt safe with me. Can we pause for a minute? I don't you guys don't understand how bad you fuck your kids up. Mm-hmm. You really don't. Like I know that like I've made the mom statistics and the single mom statistics and like I had a really bad childhood with my parents and, right. and things like that. This kid was six years old diagnosed with bipolar. Board, uh, yeah, bipolar. At six. Yeah. And then was physically abusive to his foster mom because he was unable to emotionally process his shit from his real mother. That sucks, dude. That hurts. Like that's yeah. that's one of those things that like when you really six. Six years old. And gave her a concussion. That makes me really sad. Mm-hmm. I worry constantly that I'm causing damage to the kids. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think that's a thing. I know. It's just something I worry about. Well, yeah. It's because, because of, your, of your bringing, your upbringing. Well, it's that. And like I hear things like this. And, you know, all of these kids go through these awful things. And in reality, our kids have a really good life. Right. But you also don't stick them in front of the TV or a tablet to raise them. Right. You sit down with them and work their, their, their learning skills. You run around and play with them. You're a very active parent. We are mm-hmm. active parents. When we take the kids to the park and we do something, what do we see? Oh, parents with their phones in their face. They're completely ignoring their kids. Yeah. You know how easy it would be for uh, somebody to come and snatch one of those kids off the park and the parent not even notice it because they're too busy watching TikTok. Mm-hmm. We run and, and play. We literally were playing tag on the playground, running up slides like yeah. we were 12. Your kids aren't going to have that trauma. Um, your ex is a very active father. Yeah. The kids aren't going to have that. They're, they're not. It, that's, it's just not going to be a thing. I really appreciate you saying that. That's been like <clears throat> heavy on my mind recently. It's just not going to be a thing, babe. Okay. We're, they've got four parents that are very, very active in their lives that are involved, that are present, not just there. That, right. That's a big deal. I needed to hear that. Thank you. You're welcome. Also, good on them. For keeping those kids anyway. Yeah, Yeah, you know how easy it would have been to see. Nope, not them. They're trouble. You know, and it (coughs) also makes me sad to think about the fact that they put a hold on it. Mm -hmm. Because they're like, oh, they're going to change their minds because of everything this kid just did. Most parents would. Most adoptive parents would not want to to take day one a child that's that's like that. Kids that are angry just need love. They need to to learn to process. Well, I agree. But that that takes love from somebody who's going to be patient with them. And understand that they're just not behaving to be bad kids. They're behaving because they don't know how to regulate themselves because they were never taught to. Yep. What I was not expecting or prepared for was my daughter's behaviors or mental health diagnosis. I don't even know where to start. She is very smart. We often say Yale or jail, and she will run a corporation or a gang in jail. Dark humor, because if I don't laugh, I will cry. We started seeing behaviors in kindergarten, and we thought that she was bored, so we got the call to send her to first grade for part of the day and as she got older things got worse we are at a point now where even if we have video evidence of her doing something she will look right at us and deny everything she lies and steals her lies are very quick and believable and she hates me not in the way my son took his frustrations out on me but she literally wants me dead she's 10 and a pathological liar Mm mm-hmm She was drawing with chalk on the driveway and drew a rainbow with a note that said, have a good day around my husband's car. Around my car, she drew dead people with their eyes crossed out and the word death. Wow. She has written stories about me dying. My husband, on the other hand, walks on water in her eyes. Once again, I am told it is because she had a mom, but never had a father figure. We spent two years with a therapist that did nothing. I recently fired my therapist so that she can see, oh, I recently fired my therapist so that she could see her and she has gotten a lot more accomplished in a couple months than the last did in two years. You think she meant hired? I recently hired my therapist. Um, I don't know that it could be. I don't know if maybe the therapist wouldn't work with both of them. Yeah. Well, she said that she has been diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. Right. At 10. At 10. That's not common either. It's not. So her first question is, 
What do you wish people, parents, teachers, etc., would do or would not do that would have helped you growing up with your borderline? I, I don't I, I I don't know. I, I don't even know where to begin with that because I, I had psychiatric evaluation after psychiatric evaluation, counseling, therapy. I went through a lot of that shit when I was a kid. And it took me getting in trouble with the law and having like court ordered psychiatric evaluation and court ordered anger management and court ordered therapy for me to even realize what my diagnosis was because when you're little, you don't know what borderline means. Right. And and I got diagnosed, it was either like in the, like 1990 or like between 90 and 93. It was, it was early. Like mm-hmm. it was, I, I was a kid still. Um, and there wasn't a whole lot known about borderline personality disorder. That wasn't one of those things that was just known to everyone. Um, I might have even been younger than that. Hell, it could have been in the late eighties when that happened. I, I remember the the counselor that actually diagnosed me. Like I can, I remember the building, and I remember going there a couple of times a week, and, and like actually having to go through all that. I, I'm I'm really not the one to ask that question. And at ten years old, her brain is still very young, and when she hits puberty, this can get a whole lot worse. And a whole lot worse. Because hormones are going to be involved. And Mm -hmm. it's not like they can just give her meds for her borderline. Uh, I don't know. I would find a um, therapist that specializes in borderline that does DBT, dialectic behavioral therapy, and that's where I would start. That's going to be the only advice that I can give you in this because I didn't have any of that. I feel really bad for this 10-year-old. She's about to have a really hard life. Yeah. Yes, she is. I mean, I, I bet it's hard now. Right. But when she hits puberty, like you said, and then she gets into adulthood and starts getting into relationships. Yep. Oh, yeah. Some bad. And there's going to be depression and suicidal threats. And yeah, the hormones are going to change everything. It's going to get a whole lot worse. All because this just child, when she was two, had a really shitty mom. Yeah. I fucking hate I, people. I, I got to be honest. I, I don't know if that's from her mom. Like that could be a, a chemical thing. For, like they call it a chemical imbalance in your brain, but they've been they've proved now that that's not the case. It could just be a function of her brain because mm. it is a form of autism. So it may not be from her mom. At two years old, you don't remember things that happened when you were two. Right, but things that happen to you when you're younger changes the way your brain develops. Oh, I get that, 100%. Right. But I don't know if it's it's necessarily because of the things that her mom did. I, maybe I'm wrong. I just I know that at two years old, you don't remember anything from being two. Well, you, you don't have to remember it. If you're constantly beat when you're two years old, your brain is going to know, like, that's danger. Yeah. I get that. So growing up, you're gonna grow up in fight or flight if you don't remember if you remember it or not. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, I really wish I could help this one. I don't have nothing on this. I um, I know that how I've processed my borderline and the shit that I've had to learn to live with it, but I I don't know if I would have if I would have had therapists in when I was a teenager that that understood dialectic behavioral therapy and like borderline was more known. Mm-hmm. Uh, they may have had tools to help me understand what I was going through and process my shit, but that wasn't even a thing. They were still learning about borderline when I was diagnosed. So with your borderline, it's you are either about somebody or you hate them. Yeah. So it's, um, yes. And it's one extreme or the other. Right. So this child is hating her. Mm-hmm. What are some things that she can do to kind of show this child, like, I'm not going to hurt you. You can trust me. I don't know. Because I, I I don't know I don't know that it would matter if she did right because with borderline this kid could like her tomorrow for a week or two and then she could say one thing and go right back on that hate list. <clears throat> it sounds like the adopted dad is her person, mm-hmm. like and, her favorite person. Yeah, yep. And this is this is a whole thing with the stepmom. Dialectic behavioral therapy. What you, books would you recommend? I, because as a kid, I don't know. Um, for her. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I always recommend Walking on Eggshells um, and Buddha and the Borderline because both of those books helped me process and understand my borderline differently. What? He just agreed to move to Tennessee. No. Yeah. Wait, what? Buddha and the Borderline, Walking on Eggshells, both of those are good books that I've read that helped me process things with my, my borderline. Mm-hmm. Um, but otherwise, YouTube Dialectic Behavioral Therapy. Start there. Yeah. As, as somebody who lives with someone with borderline, I mean, you've also done a lot of the work to learn how to deal with that. Some days it is harder for you than most. And I can, I know which days are bad for you at this point based on how you respond, your tone of voice, how you react to certain things. It's a lot of patience. 
Yeah. And you, you can't get angry or upset. You know, if this child says something super hurtful to you, you just have to take it with grace. And if it hurts your feelings, cry alone. Yeah. Like this child's going through it and she's going to continue to go through it. And it's not going to get any easier no. for her. It's going to get worse. I and, promise you it's going to get worse. And if you can just continue staying like a rock for her, even though if she doesn't realize it now, like you handling things with grace and peace you're a rock for her at that point because right. if you reacted violently or if you got into a screaming match with her, you're just going to continue to be an unsafe person for her in her childhood. When she's an adult and hopefully she learns to process everything and cope with stuff, at that point she might come to you and say, you know, I know what you did in my childhood and I appreciate you being here for me even though I was hateful towards you. I actually did it to my stepdad, so that's very much a thing. Yeah. I wasn't prepared for this to, to go that route. I really thought for some reason she was going to say that she had borderline and now she's got kids and she doesn't know what to do about it. Yeah. I was not prepared for a 10 year old. That's young to that be diagnosed really with borderline. They, they, it's, it's rare. Like normally when kids get diagnosed, it's during their puberty phase or, you know, as they get older in the teens, it's normally not in single digits or, you know, around the 10, 11 years old thing. Right. It's wild. I um I, I don't know. I, I I really hope that you're able to figure this out. Dialectic behavioral therapy is really going to be the only thing that I can offer, um, or tell you to look at because that's something that helped me. Mm -hmm. Um, but the kid is, you know, hard it is for kids to not emotional mind react. Like that's not a normal thing for a child. That's a maturity thing, mm -hmm. and she's not going to be able to learn to logic brain react until her logic brain is developed, and that's not at ten years old. I, I don't know. I honestly don't know. Yeah. I've never been in that position, and I, I, I got nothing. Well, I'm, I'm not sorry. an expert. <laughs> I'm sorry we didn't have more advice. Yeah. That sucks. That really does suck. Ready? Yep. Okay, sorry about that, guys. I had a phone call that I had to take. Um, actually, I got a, a phone call that I didn't really need to take, but I wasn't sure if I needed to take it, so I took it, and there was nothing there. So weird cuttage. All right. One, two, three, go. One, two, three, go. Read the email. Oh, my God. Anxiety. Panic. It's working. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't tap on my glass. I have so, <laughs> <clears throat> I have so much energy. Oh, save it. I so, just so. ate. Right. Save the energy. I had carbs. All right. <clears throat> I'm writing to you and your wife. Because I have watched many of your videos. Not so much your wife's, but yours as a man of the house. See the way your wife looks at you and the values you. I see the way your wife looks at you and values you. And it made me realize how much is wrong in my relationship with my own man. Just want to warn you, I'm not going to proofread this or watch my grammar. So this is probably going to be all over the place. But I feel like this is going to be the only way I get this out. Go for <clears> it. I grew up in the system here in Canada, DCFS. For us, it's called child, for us, it's called children's aid. They literally and figuratively destroyed my childhood. They obviously had help. My own family is extremely toxic and abusive. So all around, I have had a negativity surround me as a child and even as an adult. My example of a relationship has been a narcissist stepfather and a very vulnerable and weak mother. My mother had never stood up for herself, let alone me. So I had a very effed up example of how life and love should be. My stepfather and I do not have a very stable relationship. He once told me that, I, that he couldn't love me the way he loves the other kids because I am not his blood. That has stayed with me since he said it. I have never had nor have seen a healthy man love a woman the way a woman deserves. My mom, well, she has been stuck in the victim mentality her whole life and everyone else is to blame and she does nothing wrong. Can we pause? Yes. She said that she's never seen a man love a woman the way the woman deserves. Mm -hmm. No one deserves mm -hmm. anything. Right. How, how does that work? Just because you're a woman, you deserve to have something amazing? Right. You, you get what you put in. Mm -hmm. So if you've got an amazing woman, hopefully a man is amazing back. But nobody deserves anything. If you don't do the work, you don't deserve anything. Like I agree. That, okay. Yeah. I, I, got, I hung up on that. And if I didn't say it now... I would have been hung up on that and missed the rest of it. Okay. I'm glad you said it. Okay. Because I agree. I don't <clears throat> think anybody deserves anything yeah. in life. No. Participation trophies don't exist over here. I think the only humans who deserve anything are children who deserve good childhoods. Right. Just kids. That right. goes without saying. 
Uh, just to clarify right. for the people in the comments. Yeah. That's it. But once you reach adulthood, you don't deserve anything. Right. You work for it. That's it. And that includes relationships and communication. Especially relationships and communication. Your own growth. You have to work at that shit. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> she really did not proofread this. <laughs> she said she wasn't going to. I could tell. <laughs> she has let my stepfather exclude me from the family whenever things got hard for me. His first action would always be to kick me out. I was the only child who grew up in the system. That's messed up. So needless to say, there's a lot of resentment there and a lot of pain. Anyways, I find that a lot of their relationship traits are now feeding into my own. And it's just not a healthy environment for me, my husband, or my boys. My husband has his own issues. His mother put the responsibility of being a father figure to his two younger brothers on his shoulders at a very young age as men came and went. He watched his mother get abused by said men. It was just a very toxic and abusive environment for them as well. He was often told that he couldn't amount to anything to the point that he was suicidal. So he has lots of trauma. So needless to say, we both have baggage to fill the undercarriage of a 747. It's not healthy. I know he has depression and how bad it is because he has a hard time talking about it and often sugarcoats it. Part of that is my fault because I have a nasty habit of making it a competition. It is a very nasty habit. Mm -hmm. If I came to you about something I'm feeling with my depression and you go, oh, well, I've had it worse because of this, I would never come to you about anything again. Yeah. We, we've had this discussion in depth. When it comes down to it, <clears throat> somebody else's trauma doesn't negate your trauma. Right. But you, got, you guys have to learn to validate people. When somebody tells you something and it's emotional like that, you need the, the best thing that you can do is simply say, I never thought about that or I'm sorry that you went through that. That sounds like a really hard time. And then just stop speaking. Yeah. You're validating their emotion. What you feel is validated. I'm recognizing that. And then shut up mm -hmm. and let them continue and get it out. Once that's out there and you guys can have a conversation about it, you normally won't have to have that conversation again. Mm -hmm. Not only are you going to be closer because you had that conversation, you can understand each other's points, but that's going to help heal. Right. <clears throat> Like, I went through more than than you did, that kind of thing, which is a bitch move on my part. Well, at least you recognize it. Mm -hmm. I have been working on that so I can be more of an ear for him to vent and be more vulnerable with. But that trust is earned. And I have a very long way to go to get that vulnerability from him. Can we pause again? Mm -hmm. They're married. Yeah, they are. Okay, that trust was earned when you said I do. Hang on, wait, let me double check. That trust should have been earned before you said I do. She said my husband. She did not. No. So she mentioned you and me as your wife. No. But she didn't. After after she mentioned the, the, the mom and stepdad and being in the system and how he always kicked her out, there was a conversation about Right. She said me, my husband, my boys. And, yeah, and two yeah. kids or whatever. You're right. It is her husband. You're right. So that, that trust thing comes when you... Why would you marry somebody if you don't trust them? You and I, you know things about me that 99% of the other people on this planet don't know. Mm-hmm. You're my wife. And as I'm working through my things and I overcome shit that I have to process or if I feel I need help, I'll let you in on more of those things as it comes. But like, I'm not going to sit down one night on the couch and go through my entire life with you. Mm -hmm. Those things will come up as they come up and we'll have natural conversations. Right. But mm -hmm. I trust you. And if I didn't trust you, I wouldn't have married you. Like that's... I don't understand why you would say that trust is earned. If you married this man, that trust should be there. She means him trusting her with being vulnerable because she always made it a competition. Okay. That makes a little more sense. Yeah. That's still a problem, but that makes more sense. I, I obviously misunderstood that. Right. <coughs> you good? Yeah. I dropped my fidget toy. Tossing my things? silver, my silver skull from clocks and colors. Me next. You want me to drop you? Yeah. Well, I said tossing things oh. and I said me next. Throw you around like a rag doll. Thank you. <laughs> I, on the other hand, have been to a doctor and have been diagnosed with PTSD, major depressive disorder, and severe anxiety. So I know what I have and I'm on medication to help with it, but I am still drowning and I am taking everyone down with me. My husband and my kids are suffering because I just do not have the energy to get my shit together. I do not take care of myself physically and mentally. I am literally drowning even though I have perfected the art of hiding it. So to the world outside, it looks like I'm fine, but inside it's a whole different scenario. 
My house looks like a tornado hit it and looking at the mess is so overwhelming that the very thought of cleaning it gives me anxiety. My kids have picked up the habit of throwing their garbage wherever and not cleaning up them after themselves. And my husband, sometimes I wonder when his breaking point is going to be. Like, when is he going to be like, F this, I've had enough, and take my kids and leave me? I'm terrified of that, but still I can't get my shit together. That's a mentality. It is a mentality. That is 100% a you thing. So what's going to happen if in two months he decides <clears> to say <throat> F this and grabs the kids and leaves, knowing that you sent this email, knowing that you could have done something to stop that from happening and chose because mm-hmm. you were making a choice to not do anything. I under- <coughs> Excuse me. I understand the anxiety right. of things. Sometimes you just get overwhelmed and you don't know where to start, but you pick a task and you complete it. And then when your anxiety is back and you go, okay, oh God, what do I do next? You find a task and you complete it. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do the dishes. Right. It's not a lot, but I'm going to do them. And then the dishes are done. You're going to look around. Okay, I'm going to clean the stove. Mm-hmm. You just pick something. If it's got to get done, it's got to get done. The order of, it, of the way that it gets done doesn't matter as long as the chore is accomplished. Right. As for the kids doing what the kids are doing, that's a you problem as well because you're a parent. You're supposed to lead. Yeah, you're just allowing them to do that. Mm-hmm. I, I, I am, as somebody who has a mental illness and is with somebody who has uh, a mental illness, I, I don't use my diagnosis as um, as an excuse for anything. Mm-hmm. I don't. I've lived it my entire life. And once it was diagnosed, all it did is meant that I knew what it was that I had and I was able to learn about it to try to figure my shit out. In that scenario where you've got all these things going on and you know that they're prevalent and you know that it's a thing, when you're feeling like you're feeling... Why not just say to yourself, okay, this is my mental illness making me feel this way. Mm-hmm. I got shit to do. I have kids that depend on me. I have a husband that depends on me. It's time to get to work. I know that it's not easy for people. It's not. I've lived it. Mm-hmm. But things still have to get done. There are people, there are little children that depend on me to get off my ass and make sure that I provide a living. You are dependent on me to make sure that our bills get paid. So mm-hmm. even when I'm in a, a fetal position, suicidal, depressed mood, the world's not going to wait for me. Time doesn't give a shit what I'm going through. Mortgage companies don't give a shit what I'm going through. Creditors, car payments, none of that shit. They don't give a damn that I'm depressed. They want their money. Mm -hmm. I don't have the option of laying around and and woe is me and making excuses. I I just, so in this scenario, and as cold as that sounds, I don't have a whole lot of of information to even give about any of that because you have children that depend on you. Right. And you are teaching these young people to be people Mm -hmm. and if this is acceptable to them and they think that this is a normal life their house will look like that their kids will pick that habit up you are setting them up for trauma that's different than what you went through but trauma is trauma we just had that discussion Mm -hmm. (coughs) i get the anxiety aspect of i've let it go for so long it's too much i can't do it it's overwhelming when i clean the house i list things i have to do Clean the bed, clean the bathroom, clean the bedroom, do the living room, do the kitchen. That's four things. Mm -hmm. That's only four things. When you break it down that way and say, oh, it's only four things, it's only three things I needed to do today, it makes it seem a lot less smaller than I need to scrub the floor and the shower and I need to do the bathroom and I need to clean the mirror and I have to scrub the toilet and I have to mop the floor and I have to make the bed and put the laundry away. Right. That's too much. You're overloading yourself with too much thought. Have to do the bathroom, focus on the bathroom. Right. Knock it out in 30 minutes. Move on to the next thing. Knock out the bedroom in 45 minutes. It's one step at a time. It is. You pick one objective, Mm -hmm. accomplish the objective, and move on to the next thing. Yeah. This is not a precision-based thing. You're not going to get an award if it gets done in a certain task. Mm -hmm. As long as it's getting done, that's what matters. It's also the kind of thing where she says she doesn't do anything for herself. Right. That's also a huge, huge problem. That is a massive problem. What I would recommend doing is... If your house is as bad as you say it is, dedicate one day to part of the house. Mm -hmm. Focus on the kids' bedrooms. Make sure their rooms are clean. And then once you clean their bedrooms, stop and read a book that you enjoy doing. Or watch one of your favorite movies. And then if you still have time before dinner or whatever, knock out another part of the house. When you give yourself little rewards for getting something done throughout the day, it doesn't make you feel like you're just doing chores. Right. Well, it also wouldn't be a bad idea to give the kids a chore list. Right. It doesn't matter how old they are. If they're over three, you can give them chores. Mm-hmm. And they can start learning how to be people. Right. And if it's really that bad and you're financially capable, if you could hire a maid to come and clean the house one time, and then all you do is stay on top of it. Mm-hmm. The depression aspect, I think, is a bigger deal than the anxiety aspect. Maybe because I my anxiety's never been 
excuse me, super, super bad, like my depression has been. <clears throat> but I also know that as a man, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get a break. I don't get a choice. I, I have to provide. Mm-hmm. There's never mm-hmm. been a, a, a pity me party. Like I, I just have to do this. I don't, yeah. I don't get a choice. Um, it, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't, I, I don't know. There's even days now where I wake up and my depressive, <clears throat> my depression's bad. And I'll allow, allow to lay, allow myself to lay in bed until like 9 a.m. Right. I'm usually out of bed by like 7. Right. I'll allow myself to lay in bed until 9 a.m. and feel sorry for myself and go through whatever I'm going through and allow myself to feel it. And then at 9 a.m., I'm getting up and doing whatever I need to get done for that day. Right. And typically when I'm done knocking out those chores, I feel better. And getting up at 9 o'clock to get those chores done, even though I'm depressed, it's hard. It, it is, is not hard. easy. Yep. It is. I could I could sit here for another 10 minutes and get up at 9, 10. But then that 10 minutes turns into 30 minutes. Yep. And then before you know it, it's 4 p.m. and you did nothing. Yep. You have to push yourself. And the first few times where my depression was bad and I'd forced myself to get up, I've always had thoughts of what's the point of me doing this? Yep. I hate doing this. I hate being an adult. I hate being a mom. I don't want to do this anymore. Yep. But when you get yourself into the habit of separating yourself from your depression... It's a different, it's a different form of control. Right. <clears throat> you got, like I said, the shit's got to get done. Mm-hmm. You, you have a life, you have kids that depend on you. When it yeah. comes down to it, you don't get to do that. You don't. You don't. You, you, you have, you have, you made the decision to be a parent mm-hmm. and, and that eliminates a lot of that. I'm not saying to avoid dealing with your mental health by any means. That's not at all what I'm saying. Mental health is super important. Mm-hmm. doing something like you said where you're doing something for yourself, whether it's reading a book or going to Starbucks or just taking that 30 minutes could be enough to pull you out of your depression. Yeah. Especially if you're a stay at home and it's just you and the kids at home all day long. And then the husband comes home and you're miserable. You're never coming. You're never going to do anything. You're isolating. You're mm-hmm. isolating with two little people and you're depressed. Yeah. And you know, something <clears throat> like when the kids are sick and they stay home from school, I still know I need to get things done. And something that I really enjoy doing with the kids is sitting down and watching a movie. Right. So in the middle of giving, getting everything done, if I've knocked out the kitchen and the kids are really getting on my nerves at that point, we're going to stop what we're doing and we're all going to relax and watch a movie. The kids calm down after that. I calm down after that. That's an hour and a half of doing absolutely nothing. And it's like a recharge. Right. And then once the movie's done, the kids have calmed down, they're outside playing, and I can finish doing whatever I'm doing. I'm going to move on. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. <laughs> were you like waiting for me? Or no, I or? just uh, because uh, there's things that have that were worded in that that yeah. that triggered me, and I'm trying very hard to not be brash because gotcha. I want to help and not be an asshole. Right, but sometimes there's really no other way to say it that right. you can't gently say, "Well, you know, you're depressed, and that's okay, but you still need to get things done." But if you don't feel like getting things done, that's also okay. Right, it's not. It's not okay. I understand you're depressed. Depression sucks. Yep. I've had depression to the point where like I wake up in the morning and my first thought is suicide. Mm-hmm. It's not easy. Like you said, she has children. The possibility of your kids being depressed when they grow up is high. I'm pretty sure almost everybody in the U S has depression right. to some extent. So would you rather be the role model for those boys to where like, you know, my mom suffered really bad with depression, but she still got out of bed every day and made sure we had everything we needed. Yep. Or do you want to be the mom who's, yeah, my mom was super depressed and she never did anything and we didn't have fun and we didn't go out and go anywhere. And I think about that a lot when it comes to the kids. I'm going to think, I think about in the future, like what are they going to tell their adult friends about me and their childhood? Right. It's a good question. That's a really good question. You know, I hear other things people say about their parents from their childhood and I get horrified. Like I never want my kids to talk about me like that. That's something to think about in this as well. One day your kids are going to be grown and they're going to have a life partner and they're going to be telling their partner everything you did in their childhood, why they went through the things they went through, why they process things the way they do, why they communicate the way they do, why they live life the way they do is going to boil down to how you are in their childhood. I've tried therapy before I can even get to the point where I'm comfortable enough to let go and really talk about my issues. I'm dropped as a patient and I'm never given a reason why. So it becomes very hard to trust anyone in that profession. I know I need therapy to even begin to heal, but so does my husband. I truly believe we both need it. 
I have said it before and I will continue to say it. Go to YouTube. Yep. There are therapists who post things on YouTube for free. That's how I've gotten over a lot of my stuff. <clears throat> I've seen therapists. I've had one therapist that I stayed with for longer than two years. And even then I can't really say I learned a lot. Like I was able to process things, but I didn't really learn anything. And going to YouTube is really how I started to grow as a person. I would watch anything right. about like, um, not borderline <clears throat> bipolar disorder. I don't have bipolar, but if I can recognize tendencies with people who have bipolar that I might have one or two traits of that helps me regulate myself better. Right. I would watch thing about like men with autism. What do they go through? Because knowing that helps me in my life, whether dealing with a client or maybe dealing with my son, you can take Something small from everything you watch, especially right. if it's educational. You got to keep in mind, too, that a therapist's job is not to fix you. Their job is to give you tools for you to fix yourself. Right. They're a safe space for you to talk and vent and let things out. But their job is to listen mm -hmm. and then point out what's going on that you may have missed and then give you the tools to work on it. You can get those tools for free on YouTube. Mm -hmm. You don't need to pay somebody to listen to you talk. You can listen to what they're saying and then start applying those tools. I don't know. I've spent a lot of time in therapy. I've done a lot of that shit. And when it comes down to it, a lot of it's useless to me. Yeah, so. I agree. Like I've said, the most valuable things I've learned is from shit people said on YouTube. Yeah. And now on TikTok, because there are some really smart people on TikTok who are saying things that are just valuable as hell. Right. Then there's arguments. Then there's the arguments we get into. It, com it becomes a back and forth or what the other isn't doing or is doing. It never gets resolved, just pushed to the side. I'm often told that the only reason I have what I have is because he makes the money and he holds that over my head. I tell him all the time that he isn't emotionally, that he emotionally doesn't give a shit about me. He often makes me feel like my illness is an excuse. And sometimes I'll give him this, it is. And a lot of the times it's so debilitating that the very thought of even showering is too much for me. I get that. I push you to shower. I know. Mm -hmm. That's how I know where my mental health is. When everything is fine, mm -hmm. that's the first thing I do. I train and I shower and I get dressed. Yeah. When I'm in sweatpants or gym shorts for a long amount of time and I start backing off on my showers and I shower every other day or every two or three days, mm -hmm. my mental health is declining. And I'm right. going through that right <clears throat> now. You caught it this morning and called me on it because I didn't want to work out. And you're mm -hmm. like, this is your depression. And you made me go work out. I didn't want to do that shit this morning. I didn't want to get out of bed this morning. Right. I only got out of bed this morning because I knew the kids were getting ready to go to school and they get disappointed when I don't get up and say goodbye to them. I would have stayed in bed otherwise. I had nothing to do today. Like mm -hmm. our normal gym time got moved. I could have laid in bed until noon today and been totally fine with it. I have shit to do. Right. I don't get that that luxury. Not taking a shower obviously is, is mm -hmm. gross and I know that it's gross. But like I did shave my face and head yesterday. I'm trying to maintain some semblance of cleanliness. Right. <clears throat> um, the husband providing everything financially and having to deal with her is a horrible way to word that. But this will absolutely affect his life. It will. Yeah, yeah. Another okay. Patreon. Oh, heck yeah. And I'm almost positive that's Vomit Girl. Yep. Vomit Chick. Whatever. Yeah, I love that. So he uses the money. He makes the money to support their lifestyle and holds that over her head. I H think that's how? the way you're viewing it. Right. How does he hold it over? Did he tell you like you're a piece of shit for not working? Because that, I mean, that, right. that would fall into that category. But if you guys are arguing and he says, I work to support us, that's a fact. Right. Like he is working to support you. And then coming home to a war zone is not fun for him. Right. He's literally going from one war zone to another. This man doesn't get a break. It's actually a good point because that is a conversation that would be looked at as held over the head. Right. Because in an argument, mm -hmm. if, if she's like, you know, I just need, you're not here enough. Mm -hmm. And he's like, well, I have to pay the bills. It's not that he's hanging it over your head or throwing it in your face. It's a fact. Right. And, it, and it, in a scenario where he says that in a shitty manner, mm -hmm. it's because it bothers him right. that he's not there more. You can't, it's not easy to, to, to be a, a single income provider to begin with, especially now, like the economy and the dollar is garbage. So for people who have it so that they can stay at home, that's, that's actually a, I don't care if anybody wants to disagree with me on this or not. It's a luxury. Mm -hmm. It's not, mm -hmm. it, it's, you're privileged. Yeah. You, 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 you are in a, and it's not privileged in like somebody handed you some shit, like whoever did the work did the work. And the fact that you have it is dope. 
but it is it is not an, uh, a guaranteed thing. And a lot of people that wish that they could get to that point will never get to that point. Right. So, <clears throat> you know, realizing that he's killing himself to make sure that you can be a stay at home and the kids are there and everybody's taken care of. That's you should be grateful for that. Not bitter about it. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm not saying that she is. I'm just saying that for other people who feel this way, like right. you should be grateful for that. And then she says that I tell him all the time he doesn't emotionally give a shit about me. She tells him that. She tells him that. Instead of okay. Do you think that how, do you think that's fair to him? No. I don't either. I don't think that's fair at all. How are you gonna tell somebody else how they feel? Exactly. You know, if I this is a hard situation. It really is. I, I don't know how I would handle this if I were him. I know how I handle my depression. Right. And she's really to the point where she's just giving up on everything. That's what it sounds like. Yeah. And and it sounds like she's using her diagnosis as an excuse for it to happen. She admitted that she doesn't do that sometimes. Mm -hmm. There is no cure for your depression. There's not going to be a medication you can get. There's not going to be a therapist that's going to tell you that your depression's cured. You're going to live with depression for the rest of your life. Yep. There, no situation is going to fix your depression. Getting a new house is not going to fix your depression. Getting a new animal is not going to fix your depression. Having a baby is not going to fix your depression. The only thing you can do to enhance the quality of your life is to deal with it. Yep. Here we go. <laughs> she just told that chick to deal with her depression. You have to. <laughs> Nobody else is going to fix your depression no. but you. Right. I know that. It right, was, I know. I, I just know that people are, are going to hear that and they're going to say that. They're going to get butt hurt yeah. and feel like a victim because I'm telling them what they don't want to hear right. or what they fear of hearing. Right. When I was in my lowest of low depression, when I didn't want to work on myself, I was horrified somebody was going to tell me you, only you can fix this. Yeah. I didn't want to hear that. So I would get angry and defensive and try to fight because I don't want to fix me. I can't handle all of the darkness inside of me and face that shit. Right, because it's hard. It is hard, but you have to do that. If you want to the improve the quality of your life, you have to be willing to sit down with yourself and your demons and sort through that shit. Right. They're not going to go away. They're always going to be there. My intrusive stop, my thoughts are nonstop. I'm taking a bath and I go, oh, well, what if I just drown myself? Yeah. That's never going to go away. Right. That's been a thing since I was eight years old. Your demons are not going to go away, but you are the head of this cult. Yeah. <laughs> like, you are the leader of this <coughs> cult that is the depression in your mind. Right. And if one of those thoughts comes in, I, it's to the point where I'm like, shut the fuck up. And that was an intentional right. F-bomb. You can be here. You can say what you're going to say, but I'm going to write you off like you're some lazy whatever or hater on TikTok, you, right. it doesn't mean anything to me anymore. I've been listening to this shit for almost how old am I? So what do you say? You're the you're you're the pilot of your own plane? Crazy. <laughs> Using your own own. Using words my against own you? analogy, yeah. He works his ass off, I know this, and he sacrifices a lot of home time and first with our kids by being away from home all of the time. Can we also talk about that one? <laughs> because you either get success. Or a family. Right. You don't, you don't get, get both. both. And, and if she recognizes that he's making all of those sacrifices, mm -hmm. you need to take that in accountability when he brings up the fact that he's working so much and he's providing because he is missing those things. Yeah. And believe it or not, that's a big deal. I missed out on a lot trying yeah. to build my businesses. I missed out on graduations. I missed out on cheerleading practices, football games. I missed a lot. I missed a lot with my kids. And those are some of the big regrets that I have in my life. But had I not done the things that I did to get where I am financially, we wouldn't be as comfortable as we are now. Right. And my kids are grown and they don't hate me. We're close. We have our, our, our bonds. Mm -hmm. But I miss those moments. Right. But this <coughs> it's also important to where like if one of your kids came to you and said, Dad, I need help. Right. You can help them right. with almost anything that they need. Mm -hmm. I my, feel my kids are full grown adults who have moved out of state and still can't go, Dad, I need something. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I oblige. Mm -hmm. He is a heavy equipment operator for a demolition company that takes jobs all over Canada. So he truly works his ass off. And here I am sitting at home on my ass because cleaning is the bane of my existence. And it's scary and overwhelming to even start. It's a constant internal fight with myself. Sometimes I win and can get shit done. But for the most part, I lose and I hide in my books to escape it all. Stop it. 
You know, I, I used to distract myself with, with doing other things right. like painting or stupid knitting and shit. I got rid of all of it. If I didn't have anything that would preoccupy my time, I would be able to do other things. Right. Imagine that time management. Right. You just have to get up. I understand that it's overwhelming. You know, I was on the phone with my mom the other day and her house was flooded. She's been staying in a hotel and she was telling me, she's like, I don't know how I'm going to even start to get my house back in order because she was out of state. The house flooded for three days, three days of just still water in there. Mm -hmm. My sister and her man went in and they picked up everything, just threw it in one of the spare bedrooms that wasn't affected. So pretty much all of her house is sitting in one room right now. And she goes, I, I don't know how I'm going to get started. I'm like, the first thing you grab is the first thing you put away. Right. You open the door and go, oh, there's this is. Where does this go? And then you go put it there. That's it. I don't understand why this mm. is so difficult for people. Because the whole picture is scary and overwhelming. When they, they're they not able to focus their attention on one task. Yeah. Because everything is so out of hand. I used to get like this. You car- compartmentalize. Right. Uh, I don't know. It's just, it's just a lot. I get it. I understand that this is a thing for people, but because I don't live that, mm-hmm. I don't understand that. Right. I know that if things got to get done, they got to get done. Mm-hmm. And and because I was not given an option of laziness when I was a kid, if something needed to be done, you do it right now. When I, you know, I, I grew up, I had time on a farm over summer vacations and like when, you know, a dairy farm when I was in Maryland and, and you're up before sun gets up, breakfast is had, you eat and then you go work all day. Mm-hmm. So even at, at, you know, as a teenager, that was life. And when it got dark outside, you got to relax for a little bit, eat dinner and then go to bed. And then the next day, the same thing started all over again. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to do any of this shit. Right. I didn't have a choice. When you go, oh man, I don't want to do this. And you start making excuses as to why you can't get it done. All you're doing is procrastinating. You're now making it harder on yourself because now you have less time to do it in. Mm -hmm. But if you wake up and go, okay, this morning, I got to do these three things and it's going to take me seven hours to do it. Let's get started. You can get it done and it only takes you five hours. You now have seven hours to read and enjoy your life until tomorrow when you have your next set of chores to get done. Right. It's not like you spend every waking moment cleaning. No, I don't. Nobody does. Nobody does that. Mm -mm. Anybody that says their life revolves around cleaning and taking care of their kids is full of shit. Or you're not cleaning good enough. No, you're not. You're not. You're not. It, there's, you don't live in a house that big. Mm-hmm. It's just, there's no way. Right. That's all there is to that. I, we have 4,000 square feet under air home. Mm-hmm. You're done with everything that you got to do by like three o'clock. And, oh, that's and not that's, even cleaning That's the a house. slow day. Yeah. I'm done by three with cleaning, running errands, working out, getting the kids to school. Right. Everything is done by 3 p.m. When I don't have to run errands and stuff, I can be done cleaning in two hours. There's days that we don't do shit. Mm-hmm. Because you, everything is taken care of. You Right. Right. You're not cleaning your whole house from top to bottom every single day. Right. You clean one time and then you keep up with it until the, the following week when it's that day to do that again. Mm-hmm. You're not using a toothbrush just to, to clean everything. Right. It's just, I, I don't, I don't know. It is what it is. I, I, I just don't understand that mentality. And I'm not shaming her or shitting on her. I just, I personally don't understand You can't comprehend it. I get it. I know I need to do better, but I am so lost. I don't even know where to begin. I do not have a support system in place. So I am on my own and I do not get to get a break at all. What do you mean? What what do you think that means? That means that she's cut herself off from everybody, including her husband. Okay. I can see that. She says she doesn't have a support system at all. Right. You're my biggest support system. I couldn't imagine well, we're you we're a team. Right. But beyond that, I don't have a support system. Yeah. I don't ask people for shit. If I need something done, I go do it. Mm-hmm. I don't rely on people for stuff. Right. I, you know, we are a team because we, we, are, we are trying to make the best life that we can have for each other. Mm-hmm. If, if, you, if you weren't here, I would have no one. Right. I would have the people that I employ to do work-related stuff, but my personal life would be mine. Mm-hmm. I would have to deal with everything on my own. I don't have any family. Not, you know, I have my adopted family that lives in Tennessee, but, you know, what am I going to do? Call and complain about my life? They can't do nothing about that. What's the point in that? Right. I, so, in that aspect, if she does, if her husband's not part of her support system and they're not working as a team, that could be a problem. But beyond that, I don't see, what, what do you want somebody to come and clean your house? Like, mm-hmm. do you just need to call and complain about your life? Because if you're not taking steps to change, that's all you're doing is whining. Right. Do you need somebody to help devise a plan? Because that's easy. I, I mean, realistically, you can Google time management, mm-hmm. YouTube time management videos. Go to your TikTok. There's yeah. time management videos on there. 
I don't know. So I, I guess that's why I was asking, because I don't understand what do you mean you don't have a support system. Right. I, mean, I would say you, my mom, and my sister are my biggest support system. Okay. Like, you're number one. I see you every day. We right. talk every day. Right. But what? Uh, so, again, I don't understand. So, so what is it that I do that, that is your support system? Because, like, I know that every once in a while I'm like, babe, can you run to the bank for me? I'm busy right, right now. I can't do that. Or I don't feel like doing this mm-hmm. right now. Like I, You're I, an emotional support system. Okay. You let me cry to you. You hold me when I'm upset and I don't know why. If I come to you with a stupid feeling or a logical feeling, I tell you you don't judge me. Right. Okay. I understand that. So she doesn't have a support system. Okay. I, I get that. I, I just needed clarification. Right. Okay. I, I want to make sure that was clear enough No, for it is. You. That, okay. that does it. I just, because I don't, I don't know. Been on my own for so long, so used to just doing shit. I get that. She says she doesn't have any friends. <clears throat> So I am very lonely and I don't get the adult interaction that everyone needs. I'm so emotionally and mentally burnt out. Yeah, I get a break from the kids during the school day, but I'm alone. So is it really a break? I need social interaction. It is a break. When it the kids is absolutely aren't, a break. When the kids aren't there and you're by yourself, that is a break. She needs companionship. She does need companionship. She's isolated, which is exactly what I said earlier. Mm-hmm. I bet that's where her depression is coming from, I bet too. it is, too. We, we, you and I have talked about this a lot. Mm-hmm. My, when I get depressed, my first reaction or, or instinction is to isolate myself. Yeah. And if I can do it for a day and come back out the next day and be normal, mm-hmm. dope. But if it goes on three or four days, it's game over. I spiral hard because the longer I'm isolated, the harder it is for me to integrate myself back into dealing with people again. You can't do that. And mm-hmm. I have friends who do the exact same thing. And I'm like, bro, you need to come, you got, come over. Just come over for an hour. Get mm-hmm. out of the house. Do something. Go to Taco Bell. Right. Do something mm-hmm. where you interact with other people. <clears throat> that isolation shit is dangerous as fuck for somebody who's depressed. It Said is. the F word. That was not intentional. I need social interaction. Mm-hmm. I play video games online. Both my husband and I do. But it is not face to face. And the biggest issue is that I'd never had any close girlfriends and I've always gotten along better with the opposite sex. I've grown up being one of the boys. I just don't relate to women like I do guys. So that's the cause. So that causes a problem in and of itself because my husband is very territorial. So I try to respect his needs by not talking to someone who has shown interest in me previously. That's called respect. That's how you should live. If you, if you can't get along with other men, find butchy women. Yeah, I don't. You know, we, other tomboy chicks. Right. We have friends that that fall like super, super girly makeup everything mm-hmm. to not. Yeah. To you would think was a dude. Mm-hmm. So that you can find people that fit that metric. You just got to find what you're doing. Right. So now that they've mentioned video games, I'm I'm curious as to how much time of how much of her day is spent playing video games when the kids are at school. Mm-hmm. Because now you're messing with your time management because you're going digital right. and trying to find an escape from your life online, which is also a problem. I, I really have a disdain for video games. Oh, yeah, me too. I think they are, like, mm. people want to call weed devil's lettuce, but... <laughs> the video game is a devil's lettuce. Dude, <laughs> I have seen people ruin their lives because of video games. I know a dude in high school who got a job, like his first job somewhere, and he lost it because he would show up two to three hours late because he was playing video games. Yep. It's not worth it. I, I'm really stuck on the fact that she said, I'm trying not to interact with people who have shown interest in me previously. That shouldn't be, even be a thing anyway. Right. You're, you're married. Yep. When somebody who has expressed interest in me reaches out to me, I don't even respond to them. Right. They're either left on red or they're deleted. I don't play games. Right. There, there is not going to be a single opportunity for you to question my loyalty to you. I get that and I respect that. I'm the same way. Yeah. I, I'm not I'm not going to put myself in a position that's there's that's going to be questionable. Mm-hmm. I'm not. I can't control if somebody's attracted to me. Right. That's fine. Mm-hmm. Somebody else Tim Tim Ross in the basement guy said somebody else's attraction to me is a them problem. My integrity is intact. If I have an attraction to someone else and I make it a point to interact with that person, my integrity is shot. That's a problem. I'm not doing that. Mm-hmm. You know, so when you break it down to its simplest forms, you are making video games a priority over maintaining your household for your children. Can be. We're assuming that. She didn't say that that's what she does all day long. Right. I did. She's playing video games. Right. 
Okay, you're right. I'm just, I'm just to okay. be clear. So hypothetically, right. she was playing video games all day. That, the, and that's a very safe assumption. Right. You are making video games a priority for maintaining a household for your children. Mm-hmm. That makes you a bad parent. Yeah. I don't care what anybody says. If your house is a tornado, as she said, it looked like a tornado went through it. And you're ignoring it playing video games to try and make yourself feel better. Yep. That's not okay. We say the same thing about men who work all day, come home and get drunk and play video games and ignore their wife and yeah. kids. That's not okay. You being there but not present. You know, I, I don't do anything fun for myself until all of my chores are done for the day. I All of my errands are ran in the morning. That way, when I am home, I am home for the day right. until I have to get the kids. And then I clean. I do whatever I want to do. And then I'll relax. I'll paint. Right. Do whatever I want to do. Watch a movie. Take a bath. <clears throat> Yeah, that's the way it's supposed to be. Right. Procrastination leads to failure. If you know you got shit to do, you get it done mm-hmm. so you can screw off for the rest of the night. You don't screw off all day and then at the last minute go, oh, God, I have to do X, Y, Z, and I don't have enough time to do it. Now the anxiety is going to kick in. Things aren't going to get done until the next day, so your workload tomorrow becomes heavier. Mm-hmm. It's just time management. It is. So I try to respect his needs by not talking to someone who has shown interest in me previously. I did try to get someone to meet my husband once that has shown interest in me previously because I wanted a friend, but still he refused to meet my husband. So I caught him off and don't talk to him anymore. Good. He's brought it up often in fights because that guy was interested in me. So that was my mistake. Why would you put yourself in that position? That's exactly what I was talking about. Yeah. I I do not interact with people like that. You know how, you know how that would make your husband feel like, can you put yourself in his shoes for a minute and think about that? You know Mm -hmm. that this dude has interest in you. And I can tell you as a man, most men with women friends want to fuck that woman. Oh, yeah. Nine times out of ten. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and you see it on TikTok when men are like, oh, yeah, that's your best man. That's your best friend. Blah, blah, blah. Call him and be like, hey, I'm having problems with so-and-so right now. You want to sleep together? It'll make me feel better. Those dudes are always like, hell, yeah. Oh, yeah. Every time. Yep. Mm -hmm. I, that that's a, a recipe for disaster right there. That's a red flag to me. Yep. Why don't you find? Why don't you make friends with people who are in relationships, mm-hmm. and and become friends as a couple? Yeah, I don't. I don't think I don't have any single dude friends. Ironically enough, I don't have any single dude friends either. No? <laughs> <laughs> like, we don't interact with people that are single. Right, why no. would you do that? You know, before you and I became a thing, <clears throat> I was talking to a lot of people, chicks and dudes. Right. And a lot of those dudes were single. There was, they've expressed interest in me, but I put the brakes on that. Like, we're going to be friends. Right. But when you and I became a thing, that stuff just naturally stopped because they're talking to me in the hopes of right. she's going to change her yep. mind. That's exactly right. That is exactly right. And then when you and I got together, they realize, oh, this isn't changing. Mm-hmm. So we're not, it just dies off. Yep. We actually don't have single friends that we hang out with. Mm-hmm. Because single friends have a different lifestyle than married couples do. Right. All of the shit that single people are trying to do revolves around meeting someone. Mm-hmm. We already met someone. Yeah. So what do we have in common? I'm not going to a bar or a club. No, thank I you. I don't enjoy that when I'm single. Mm-hmm. I don't want to meet a woman who's going to the bar. That's not the type of woman that I'm trying to attract. If you have the ability to stay out until 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning to get shit-faced drunk, you have nothing to offer me in life. Yeah. I'm, I'm way past that shit. I did that when I was a teenager. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm I, old. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. The The fact that she didn't cut it off immediately as respect to her husband because she has a need that needs to be met, that she's prioritizing, that's not okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm not, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying that your partner <coughs> has to provide everything in your life. They can't. They should be able to provide majority of it, though. Mm-hmm. If you need companionship, I always go to you. Right. You're the funnest person I know. <laughs> <laughs> that I love says a lot because I'm not that fun. <laughs> you really are, though. Like, I really enjoy being around you. We laugh. We have fun. We we poke fun at each other. Right. I, I wouldn't go to anybody else. I couldn't imagine messaging another man and saying, like, hey, do you want to go see a movie tonight? I want to go see a movie with you. Right. That's you're, the way that's supposed to be. You're my best friend. Right. I can understand that being a thing if it's of the same sex. Right. I believe that you should have girlfriends that you go hang out with. When yeah, you, when you do, do boyfriends tonight, I'm happy about that. Mm-hmm. The one time that I interrupted that because I forgot it was a thing, I felt like shit over it. Right. There are things that I get from my guy friends that I don't get from you. Mm-hmm. I'm not a dude. Right. So like, and it's not even like gossip or anything mm-hmm. like that. It's just. 
man time. Man time. I don't even know how to explain that or even be able to like put a print on what it is that that is for me. But like I get that. It's just like a bunch of <clears throat> masculine energy and you guys right. just get each other. And we do when yeah. like so, for example, when Sean and I are training and, and you and Hope don't come out or if you've got the kids or whatever's going on, it's just him and I out there. It's a very different training session right. than it is when everybody else is out there. We don't talk a whole lot when there's other people out there, but when it's just him and I, we talk the entire time and it's, it's catching up on life and like we push each other and we call each other names and like, come on, you pussy move that weight. And like, it's a very different environment and that's my time Mm -hmm. with my guy friend. So like right now, the way our training has changed, I don't even have that. So like I'm messaging Tim every once in a while and I've become very close to AJ Mm -hmm. because he's it's work related, but now we're sending each other TikToks and shit doing the little gay bromance thing. Right. I love that for you. I I need it. Right. I, I need that, that, um, dude interaction. Yeah. Yep. That's it. And I, and I think it's important. So if she doesn't mm-hmm. have a companionship in her life in any way, shape or form, she needs to find a female friend that would, that matches her. I agree. Uh, tomboy energy. Mm-hmm. I guess I could put it that way. You know, it, it's Go. also on her to make those connections. Right. When you isolate yourself, people aren't going to kick down your front door and say, let's be friends. Right. I found you. It's not going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> Start with Facebook groups. Mm hmm. You know, get a hobby. Yeah, get a hobby. Learn to play dodgeball. <laughs> I'm actually really good at dodgeball. I'm good at <coughs> dodging. I can't throw really well because, you know, I'm, I look like I have muscle, but I don't. <laughs> but, you know, start going out for walks. Go outside. I love being outside. Like the sun and the wind and the trees and the grass. Just It's a great time for me. Being outside, I'm, I don't know. I could be wrong, but science has proven being outside will make you happier yeah. than sitting indoors in a dark room looking at whatever screen you're looking at. Yep. Lack of sunshine is actually bad for your body. Mm-hmm. My husband also does not have friends, but he does have coworkers that he has beers with and talks with. So to me, that's friends. I have no one like that. I'm just too socially awkward to get along with other women. I have no idea why. She's making excuses. You know, I was just thinking, so what are you going to do about all of this? Right. You're, you have identified everything that is wrong. I can sit here and just say things, but until you decide that you're going to make actions happen, that right. you're going to be in the same rut. But it sounds like instead of going, okay, I know I need a female friend, she's going to make an excuse as to why she can't find a female friend mm-hmm. and then try to find a dude friend because she's more comfortable with a guy, even though she knows it's going to bother her husband. Just like she doesn't want to clean the house because it's too overwhelming. She makes an excuse. It's hard. I don't want to do it. Do you really want a guy friend over a chick friend or do you want a guy friend because you're going to give you attention that your husband's not? That's a valid question. Mm -hmm. It is a very valid question. Because when I was only comfortable being around dudes, it's because dudes would constantly compliment me and make me feel good about myself and tell me I'm an amazing woman. Chick friends don't do that. (laughs) It's because I was seeking validation. Now that I have you, all of that is met. I'm, I would rather only have chick friends at this point. I don't want dude friends. Dude. Dude friends are grimy sometimes. Yeah, you think? And they muddy shit. And that where that's where it comes in with the shit that can be like, they can message me and hit on me. And unless I keep that shit in check, I, that's a whole mess I'm not wanting to deal with. Right, right. I'm starting to get lightheaded. From what? I don't know. It's because you're looking at me, isn't it? <laughs> Take your breath away. You're cute. <laughs> uh, because I'm lightheaded, I feel like everything I just said didn't make sense. No, it made sense. You got the wall was. The what? Wawas. Everything's going wah, 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 wah. <laughs> A little bit. What if I'm having like seizures or something? Maybe some oxygen. <sighs> Stop looking to get dude friends. <laughs> Seriously. Yep. That that's one of the problems in your relationship right now. Just, just stop doing it. Look for butch chicks, like you said. I can promise you there are chicks out there that do the same things dudes do, but they don't want to sleep with you. Yep. I mean the they butch might. chicks might, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they might. Sometimes I feel really good about the emails we get and answering yeah. them, and other times I don't. I feel like I am just shitting all over So do those. I. Yeah. So do I. But it's because of the content. Like, I'm not going to, like, sugarcoat somebody and rub the back of their head and tell them, oh, life is okay. Yeah, I'm not, I'm I'm not, not going to throw guy. a pity party. Right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold you accountable for these That's things. It. And these, these really sound like a bunch of excuses. And if my daughter came to me talking to me the way that this email is worded, you tell her to put some dirt on it. Get up. Get man up a little bit. Like <laughs> you ain't bleeding. Quit crying. Literally. <laughs> Damn it. 
And it's going to start with small things. You're not going to be able to jump up and clean the whole house right away. No, but you can start. You can start. You have to take little steps. Clean the kids' bedrooms, then clean your bedroom, and then cook dinner. You know, it, it's all small steps, but you have to keep up with it. You can't do it for two to three days. Get on a high that you're doing it, and all of a sudden you feel good, and then when you crash, stop. Yeah. You have to be consistent with it. It's discipline. It's called discipline. Mm-hmm. So I literally have no other adults to talk to except for the people on Xbox. Okay, so you talk with people on Xbox. Those are friends. Mm -hmm. Just because you're not seeing them in person, those are people that you interact with. Yeah. That's adult interaction. Yes, it is. Unless she's playing video games with 12-year-olds. You know, your husband could argue that the friends that you have on Xbox is the same thing as him and going out and getting beers and talking with his coworkers. Because those are his coworkers. He could say that those aren't my friends. Those are just people I work with every day. Right. The people that you play with on Xbox on people that you met, you decided you enjoy speaking with them and then continued playing with them. These are the people he's hired to work with. Right. We do nothing together one-on-one, -on -one, and we have literally gone on one date together in the 13 years that we have been together. And I feel like that if we had at least a few hours to go do something together, like drive around town, just the two of us, and really connect again, we'd be okay. A few hours is not going to make you guys okay. Nope. There is a lot of work that needs to be done here from what sounds like on both sides. Yep. I support him and praise him often, as often as I can, so he knows that I appreciate what he does. And right now, he doesn't really have much to praise me for, but like even the little things would be nice. Like what? I don't know. Congratulations, you put on pants today. I, there's there's nothing in there that says she's doing anything other than playing video games and, and making excuses and neglecting the household right and letting the kids throw trash on the floor mm -hmm. as 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 somebody that if i was in a, a, a partnership or a relationship where that was the case i would be i would be frustrated with that i would be there's in, not know. going to be a positive moment because i would be i would genuinely be upset with the state of affairs of my house mm-hmm and as a man who's working a full-time job, if he has to come home and then take care of everything else in the house, why? Oh, I'm going to sneeze. Anyways, what I was going to say is... I need a second. I'm traumatized. <laughs> I could be a cow in a field of tulips right now, but instead I have to deal with the fact that one day I can sneeze and dislocate my rib. <laughs> I hate it here. Could be worse. Could be worse. You're right. It could be a lot worse. Anything can happen to my human form. Yep. And I would just have to live with that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. This is bullshit. I never asked to be born. Thank you. <laughs> Accurate. Victim mentality. I actually don't remember what I was going to say before that sneeze. I apologize. That's all right. It's, it was probably me getting ready to say some mean shit, so I'm glad I don't remember. Oh, so she said that she praises him and shows him often that she appreciates him. Right. Well, you also shit on him and tell him that he's not emotionally there for you and he doesn't give a shit about you. Yeah. Ooh, contradictory. It is. It's very contradictory. You know, if you told me all of these nice things, but then continue to shit on me two days later, at that point, okay, so you really don't think those kind things about me because now you're telling me how you really feel. I really do not have it easy with our boys either. My oldest son, who is nine, has ADHD and sensory processing disorder. My youngest son, who is five has autism level one with severe expressive language de de delay. So he doesn't talk at all, save for the vocabulary of a 17 month old. So all singular words, and it's an everyday struggle. I fight tooth and nail to make sure they have all the professional help they need because clearly I can't provide, provide the kind of help that they do. And I make sure we make it to all of the appointments and therapist visits that they have. I make sure they're fed and clothed. I have done parenting classes so I can be a better parent to them so that I don't continue the cycle of abuse I dealt with as a child. I don't want that for them. I know there are going to be things they have to recover from because of the way that I am. I'm not stupid. I know them seeing me at my worst is not healthy for them, but I'll be damned if they grow up completely broken like I have. I may not be able to fight for myself right now, but I will certainly fight for my children. Okay, then that's it. That's your answer. Yeah. That's your answer. Do you, if, you, if you really believe what you just said that you may not be able to fight for yourself, but you'll fight for your children and then clean your fucking house. Mm -hmm. Teach your children not to leave garbage laying around. It. Stop playing Xbox. Do the things that a mother is supposed to do because I got to be honest, the your best is not, not enough. enough. It's not. 
And that's an excuse that every every Gen X parent mm-hmm. was told. So every 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 anybody Generation X, you've heard your parents say, "I did the best I can." And 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 we free ranged kids. Like we were a very different generation, and, and we can tell you that that's not enough. Right. <clears throat> And the crap part is that my husband doesn't even acknowledge that I do this for them. That's a problem. What's a problem? That he's not acknowledging the fact that that she's doing what needs to be done for the kids. Yeah. Can we pause this? I'm getting a headache. Yeah. Okay, guys. So it is the next day. Uh, we ended because Chris wasn't feeling well on that email. And instead of trying to figure out where we were, we're mm-hmm. just going to jump to the, the end of that email and go ahead and discuss that part. All right. <clears throat> and I, mm-hmm. again, I, I'm, I've been coughing for the last 45 minutes. So if I have a coughing fit, I apologize. So jumping to the last paragraph. I am, however, doing what I need to do to get a job in my field. I went to school for personal support work, which I believe is like a nerd's aid in the States. <clears throat> did I say nerds? You did. Instead of nurse. Nurse's aid. I was going to let it ride. <laughs> Don't let that ride. I, I literally took the two words and put them together. <laughs> Nurses aid and said nerd. <coughs> Unbelievable. I'd be working with elderly people, helping them with their basic life necessities. We can no longer live on just his income. It's becoming too hard. So I need to do a few things in order to get a job in my field. I need a vulnerable sector check, which is an extensive police background check. I've never heard it called that. Is, are we on the same email? The one where she's super depressed. Yeah. Yeah. This is the end of it. How is she going to go from not being able to take care of her house and her kids to taking care of an elderly person? That's a really good question. <clears throat> not going to lie. If I were him, I, I'd be a little frustrated. Like you can go and take care of other people, but you can't take care of your family. In the house? Yeah. yeah. I'd be a little salty about that. I would be too. <clears throat> and first aid training renewed, etc. So I'm just getting that into place. And I think that will help me in a lot of ways and help us cause and help us because then he won't feel like all the financial burden falls on him alone, which is not a totally traditional thing, but it's needed. And I think <clears throat> it will help me give the, I think it will help give me the kick in the ass I need to begin to get my life together. I most definitely need therapy. So I'm going to check around to find a place that will provide that. I guess what I'm asking you both is where can we both start to talk about our issues and work together to make a better, healthier, more fulfilling life for the both of us? Like, should we go through with moving away from our families and letting go of the toxicity they bring to the picture? Should I look into couples therapy? Where do I start? I know there is going to be a lot of criticism that comes my way because in reality, I am stuck in the victim mentality too, just like my mom, and I don't want to be there. So any advice, no matter how hard it is to read, I'll take it. Just please, any advice you provide is well accepted. I know this is a long email and probably not as in-depth as it should have been, but I'm not really good with words. But thank you for your time, and I hope you read this. So one, I think that her going back to work is going to help with the isolation issues that she was having. I agree. And that's going to be good for her mental health. Mm -hmm. I don't know what she's talking about moving away because we obviously didn't read that part. Um, But if if there's issues with the family there, moving away could help. Um, Trying to heal that relationship with the family could provide you some sort of reprieve and letting them watch the kids while you take a break or whatever. (coughs) I don't think she actually ever mentions anything (coughs) about how... The extended family affects what they have going on. Yeah. That's the first time she mentioned it moving away from them. Yeah, I, I don't know. There's a lot of victim mentality there. There's a lot of laziness there, too. Mm-hmm. And, and that's a harsh thing to say. But in what we were reading yesterday, that's all I kept thinking. Like, yeah. this, she's just making excuses because she doesn't want to do shit. She has the answers. <clears throat> she knows she needs therapy. She knows she needs to get out of the house. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I feel like this is more of her just writing it out so she can see it herself. And that could be very beneficial. It could. There's people that have actually emailed us and said, hey, I see, I was about to send you an email, mm-hmm. but in writing it all out, I figured my shit out. I just wanted to thank you. And I'm like, sweet, I didn't do shit. Right. Good job. It's all here. There's really no advice. Yeah. You just have to get up and do it. You have to fight your depression. It's not hard. I mean, it's not hard. It, it, it's hard. It is hard. But, but it's doable. The more you do it, the less hard it becomes. Right. You know, when my depression a year ago versus what it is now, like what I have now is so much more manageable because I got off my ass and I was like, I'm not going to let you defeat me today. And I get things done and I do chores and I play with the kids and we run around outside. And I even make it a point to sit outside for at least 20 or 30 minutes a day. Yeah. 
our active, like our active, the mm-hmm. um, the activity in our lives, because we are active, physically active, I think also helps. Oh yeah, we work out five days a week. <coughs> and run and play and tag and mm-hmm. <clears throat> do all the stuff with the kids that we do. It's important to be moving your body. <clears throat> yeah. I saw a TikTok of a kid last night who was asking his parent to come catch bugs with him. And the parent was like, no, I'm sitting. And the kid was like, no, sitting is bad for your heart. You need to move. They actually have done studies that say sitting more than three hours a day is is more damaging to your body than smoking cigarettes. Wow. Yeah. We're not made to sit like this. This is, uh, you know, a first world problem over the last hundred years. Right. <clears throat> I want to, um, real quick before I forget, we, we, we did a BPD thing and I, I don't know where I, I put it in the podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, so whoever was that we were talking about that had borderline, it was a 10 year old. Um, I found last night, there's somebody on TikTok that you can look up. Her name is BPD relatable, R E L A T A B L E phenomenal TikToker that, that talks about borderline heavily. So, Mm -hmm. um, I'm adding Mm -hmm. that in so that it's included somewhere in this podcast. So when the lady listens to it, she'll find it. Dope. All right. Sorry about that guys. Mm -hmm. I just had a coughing fit that almost made me vomit. Speaking of vomit, let's read an email from Vomit Girl. <laughs> I like how you tied that in. All about the segue. That was good. Some hindsight, just so that you guys don't think that we're picking on Crystal. She uh, she is somebody that we are friends with on TikTok who had a conversation with me about gross hair in the drain because that's my ooh. Mm-hmm. And she's like, I can handle anything but vomit. Yeah. And then she was like, I'm the vomit girl in the next com- like content that she left. And now that's just who she's become. Mm-hmm. And we know her name, first name, last. We right. both follow her. We talk to her all the time. Mm-hmm. But that stuck. It did. Be careful what you call yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so we can call this an update, so to speak, and more background information. The background will connect the update. So the background. Ooh, trigger warning. This involves SA. Of course it does. So... If you are not prepared or mentally ready to hear about SA, click away. Yeah. It is literally the next sentence I'm going to (laughs) read. I was sexually abused by my cousin when I was a child. I was also sexually assaulted numerous times in high school. (laughs) The revelation of this pattern will be at the end of my background. Just keep a timeline. I got married in 2006 and divorced in 2012. During our marriage, he was emotionally, financially, and sexually abusive. I hate people. Yep. <clears throat> I get why there was a great flood at one point. Yeah. When he handed me the divorce papers, he said we could try therapy or just a divorce. At the time, my grandma A, she raised me, was passing away from cancer. He had at a minimum of three other women he was planning a life with. For me, it was an easy out. He didn't want to be with me, and it was my only way to get away from the abuse. You know, it must have really sucked to know that he had at least three other women that he was trying to plan lives with. It wasn't out for you, though. Yep. I would have taken that and ran with it. Whatever you want, I'll sign the papers right now. I continued to live with him until October of 2012. I was his veteran caregiver and paid to care for him. Words, I was his secretary. Does that make sense to you? Nope, read it again. I continued to live with him until October of 2012. I was his veteran caregiver and paid to care for him. Words, I was his secretary. Okay, so she was, she actually was his like legit caretaker, probably. Okay. (coughs) During that time of me living with him, the sexual abuse continued along with emotional. I was petty and pulled out half of the money in the bank, took my name off the account, opened my own, took his name off the vehicle insurance since I was the policyholder. This left him without insurance, and I had zero, she said, fluckers. <laughs> Thank you for that, because we're really working on the F word <laughs> to give. I also did the same thing with the phone bill. Again, no regrets. I don't think I knew that was petty. It was around, comes around. I would have done that, too. I would have probably pulled out more than half in the bank account. So what you're saying is, is I need to take you off the bank accounts. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't abuse me. so Only when you ask. That's very true. (coughs) Damn it, I wish I could breathe. After we cut communication, I started therapy and my bachelor's work for social work. I spent three years getting to know myself, enjoying reading books. (coughs) One summer I read 40 books for photography and just being alone. Her photography is actually pretty good. Yeah, I've seen it. In 2015, 
she in 2015. I don't know if this is her new partner. She doesn't want the name mentioned. That's so fine. I'm I'm glazing over that, but I don't know who this person is to okay. her. So this is background of the person she's met. The mom and dad separated when he was a toddler. His mom was always trying to find love with other men. She married a dude when the guy was around eight or nine. <clears throat> the man told his mom that she had to pick between him or the kid and put a gun on the table. And his mom picked the man. How do people get into situations like that? That's really crazy to me. Like, question is, how did she stay? <coughs> how, I mean, obviously she didn't shoot the kid. But I mean, what was that? What was the ultimatum there? Like, is it just a right. scare tactic? I, like, <coughs> did she leave the kid there and they they rode off into the sunset together? Like, I, I don't understand. The, I don't understand the mentality in yeah, that. Yeah, I don't understand it either. People are fucked up. That's really crazy. His dad was and still is a truck driver. It was hard for him to raise the boy and be there for him when he was younger. He did take him and his new wife, and that did not last long since his wife did not like the kid. So back to mom's, he went. <clears throat> I'm just going to start calling this dude Nick. Made up name. Made up name. He was forced into therapy after therapy, Christian camp after Christian camp, while with his grandma. He has had two marriages, the first one they got married when they were 17 and 18, when he enlisted into the military. They got stationed here, and while he was at boot camp and at work, she would cheat on him. Eventually, they got divorced. In 2011, he met a second wife and were not planning to be wed or have a relationship. She got pregnant and they got married so that she could have health care for her and the baby. During this time, he completed two tours and he will not talk about them. She cheated on him as well. And in 2013, they had their son again by irresponsibility on both parties. They tried their marriage again and in 2014 got divorced. Because Nick did not have any parenting under his belt because of the tours during his child's birth, he accidentally burned his son. He did, he did everything right afterwards. He called his ex-wife, went straight to the military hospital, and was charged with child negligence <coughs> and had a restitution of $65,000. <coughs> Holy shit. That's more than some people make in a year. It's more than a lot of people make in a year. That's wild. Who did he pay that to? What What is a restitution of $65,000 for? Uh, well, I mean, if there was medical bills involved, although he took him to the VA. Right. So there wouldn't be medical bills. So I'm assuming that it went to the government because that's how that works. It's gay. <coughs> <clears throat> over this. I know. So over this. So 2015. We met in May of 2015 and nurtured a friendship to the best of my abilities. <clears throat> he was nothing like anyone I've ever been with. I have been single for three years and him a year. I try to push him away with every single negative experience in my life down to my anxiety, fear of vomit. I was forced to... Oh. Yeah. Yeah. And poop. I was forced to sit in my own poop in third grade. My teacher <clears throat> wouldn't allow me to use the restroom. I had a shit on her desk. Ooh. I keep hiding behind the microphone. I, I have to like consciously... <clears throat> I actually would have done that. Oh, Yeah. My mom told me when I was little, if a teacher, if I had to go and nobody would let me go, to just go. Yeah. What are you going to do? Follow you to the bathroom? Mm -hmm. And if they refuse or they bring you back, let them have it. I got to go. If you're going to prevent me from going, I'm going. I would have shit on her desk in front of everyone. Yeah. I'm trying to think as a parent what I would do if my eight-year-old came home and said, I shit my pants because my teacher wouldn't let me use the restroom. Oh, that would be very bad. I would have a problem. No, the teacher would have a problem. Oh, yeah. No, I. That's what I mean. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there is way too much information about people on the Internet to be fucking around with people's kids. I'm yeah. telling you. I'm telling you. Somebody's going to get hurt one day from this shit. We went out to a fancy and expensive steak restaurant. I was not used to the price and the treatment. Girl, I get that. <laughs> 
<laughs> Tell the story. Tell what story? The the can I have the drink? Can I can I can I order this? Oh, okay. So can I order a side? Shit used to get on my skin so bad. So I grew up with a single mom. We didn't <clears> have <throat> a lot of money. So when we would go out to eat, we would literally have a budget. And I would have to ask, hey, can I get this extra side? Hey, can I get this extra drink? Because that three or four dollars mattered when it came to the bill. Mm-hmm. And when you and I started dating, out of habit, I would order my meal and be like, hey, can I get something extra? And you'd be like, I don't care what, just order it, get whatever you want. And I, I did that for like three or four months. And then one night you just looked at me and said, stop asking me. Yeah. You don't have to ask me. You're my woman. Get what you want. I don't care. And like that, that really threw me off. It was a really hard habit for me to break. So I get it. Even now, I still have to fight the urge of asking permission to get like something more expensive. Like when we went to the Kona Grill and it was like $35 for a meal, I was like, oh my God, don't ask, don't ask. Just order it, just order it. If he doesn't want you to get it, he'll say no. (laughs) All right. All right. The steak alone was $35 and the side was $12 each. I had a panic attack asking for my food. I had a panic attack, asked for my food to go and ran out of there panicking and he still came back. I get that. (laughs) It is a very hard habit to break when, you know, growing up, you were constantly told no, so you just stopped asking. And then in adulthood, when you're with somebody who has money and they're like, just get what you want, there's always that, well, is he going to throw it back in my face later because he spent $40 on a meal? Ugh. It's a lot. It's a you lot know, to process. A lot of that <clears throat> doesn't really come down to having money either. Right. <clears throat> Excuse me. When you have, when a man is trying to make his woman happy, mm-hmm. if she's ordering expensive food, he'll look at the menu and downgrade. It happens. A lot of gentlemen will do that. They'll say, okay, she's getting a $35 meal. I have 60 bucks. I'm going to just get a smaller soup and a salad or some shit just to, to make up for it. I'm not really that hungry. I just want to spend time with you. You know, all kinds of excuses and shit is made to make themselves look good. Right. <clears throat> but there's also people out there who will pick up an extra job mm-hmm. or will start picking up extra hours or go and convince their, their boss to give them a raise so that they can provide a better life because now they have somebody they're interested in. Mm-hmm. When you are trying to provide for somebody and you are in control of your finances, as a man, normally you try to work harder to be a better provider. <clears throat> it's different when you're with somebody than when you're not because it's okay to just survive. Mm-hmm. If it's just you and you've got everything that you need and you're able to make things work for just yourself, you don't need much more than that. When another life comes in and you're trying to be that guy, you are going to overperform in almost every aspect to make that work. Not all men, right? gentlemen, good men. <clears throat> I went to MA. What's MA? What state is MA? Mass. Massachusetts? Mm-hmm. Massive two shits. I hate the way we abbreviate the states. Yeah? Yeah. Are we going to have a meltdown over abbreviations? I'm just thinking about it. It doesn't make sense to me. Like Louisiana is LA, right? Mm -hmm. No, is it? Mm -hmm. Right. But Massachusetts doesn't end in an A, but it begins with MA. Florida is FL and it ends with an A. Right. It used to be FLA, but they changed it. It just doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't connect to my brain. It doesn't have to. So she went to Massachusetts in August of 2015 to look at a school for her master's program came back and they went on their first official date september 11th oh that's my birthday what a tragic birthday to have <laughs> i remember <clears throat> when 9 11 happened i was like super excited for my birthday party and i was like all oh, my friends are gonna come over and nobody showed up because thousands of people died on my birthday and my mom was like oh yeah there's a hurricane so nobody's coming to your party <clears throat> And then I realized it was because yeah. thousands of people died on my birthday. It makes me sad to think about. I hate my birthday. <laughs> I was not ready for any intimacy regardless of my body's reaction to him. We had an open relationship until the middle of November, beginning of December, when I was ready. Okay, wait a minute. I need you to read that again because that doesn't make sense to me. I was not ready for any intimacy. <coughs> Mentally, right? Right. Because she said, okay, I got it. Yeah. So they had an open relationship until the middle of November, <clears throat> beginning of December, when she was ready. So they courted for four months. That's dope. Good. Right. But during that time, he got someone else pregnant. Oh, that's a problem. Because they had an open relationship. She did that to herself. Yeah. 
One thing I know weighs very heavily on him because it did change our relationship. The woman was very manipulative. No. No. This is why you dedicate all your time. A woman would never be manipulative to a guy. This is why you dedicate all your time to one person when you're courting somebody. I'm fucking say it. Preach. I'm telling you. I'm like, telling you. If you found the person who you think is the one and they're not ready yet, you don't go sleeping around with other people. No, you wait. Because of this exact situation. You wait. If if I if we were like courting <coughs> and I found out you got somebody else pregnant just because I wasn't ready to have sex with you, it'd be over. Yeah. Well, I mean, obviously. That's why. If we were if we were courting mm-hmm. and I felt the need to go to somebody else to get the play or attention that I, I needed, right. I would just stop courting <clears throat> you. Mm-hmm. I can't lean back because then I look like just a head. <laughs> you do. <laughs> <laughs> You're like the guy from the Wizard of Oz. Yeah. I got into school in Boston for my master's. My plan was to move out there for two years to have the best learning experience and come back to Colorado. He didn't change my plan. In June, I went out there and things did not go to plan. I was there for a total of eight weeks. I dropped 17 pounds. I was completely isolated, no vehicle to go anywhere. I slept 16 hours a day. On July 21st, 2016, I miscarried in a state I was isolated in with only auntie who shut down on me emotionally. I came back in August, started working at school and going to therapy. Nick was told to pick either his son or me and I told him to pick a son because his son would need him. In 2017, the woman called the police saying that he was threatening her life with an ax and he went to jail. He did not threaten her life. She had his phone and said it was locked in her car. He took a little tomahawk ax to the window to get his phone back. Okay, so here's here's a fun fun little thing. Right. It's a phone. Leave it. Right. Go get another one. I, I don't well, I don't understand people's well, thought process behind this. Uh, me either. Was she in the car <clears throat> with the, his phone? It, it doesn't matter. Right. It's but a there, phone. That's like, a if, difference. It, it's not, though. I mean, in terms of a charge, it absolutely right. is. <clears throat> but in a scenario like this, if you and I were at odds mm-hmm. and I left my phone in your car and you wouldn't let me have it, I'd be like, cool, I'm out. You can keep the phone. You can keep everything else. Don't ever reach out to me again. You're dead to me. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to go buy a new phone, new phone number, and I'm going to go about my life. Right. Because I don't owe you anything. Mm-hmm. You can get your child support payments. Have a great life. I hope you drink toilet water. I got nothing for you. People really <clears throat> go to extremes. They really do. It really do. That's crazy. It, uh, why did he have a tomahawk? Who? Do, who what, right, where did you get that from? <laughs> That's not a knife. <laughs> This is a knife. That's wild. Like, That's a really good question. Like, did he, did he, is he just carrying one on his belt? Where was did, he obsessed with Vikings? <laughs> <laughs> How does that happen? <clears throat> you know, I'm, I hope I, that made her laugh. I, I genuinely like this chick as a person. So, right. like, I'm not trying to shit on her, but. Yeah. That's just wild to me. I'm going to be honest. If she was in the car. If I was that chick and I was in the car and a man left his phone in my car and I wouldn't let him get it and he took an ax to my window, Mm -hmm. I'd be calling the cops too. Yeah, absolutely. You are coming at me. For all I know, you're trying to get to me with that ax. I'm in this car. You're coming at my car with an ax. That's a scary situation. In Florida, you can shoot them through the window. That is true. Yeah, the gunshine state. The the capital, fuck around and find out. Yeah. I love it here. Which is why we're considering Tennessee, right? Yeah. Well, Tennessee's... <laughs> they've, they've got a good governor, too. Yeah, they do. Mm-hmm. The end of 2017, she moved to another city, and the court case was completed. He had two years probation and anger management skills class. Both completed. They were volatile to e- together. <coughs> they fueled the fire for, e- for each other with abuse, anger, cheating, and so forth. Can we pause for a minute? Anger management classes are bullshit. Oh, yeah. They go, you go there. They intentionally push your buttons to make you angry and then try to tell you how to deal with your shit while you're pissed off. Yeah. That really helps. Right. I'm going to process a whole lot while I'm, <laughs> while I'm angry at right. you. Right. Get me in my emotional mindset so I can really not listen to what you're right. saying to me. In the end, he signed his rights over to her because she would <coughs> not stop harassing him. You know what? Good. 
Guys, if a woman in your life is making it really hard for you to be in your child's life, walk away. That kid is going to grow up, develop their brain, start thinking logically and realize you did everything you could and that the mother is the one who kept you away. Every child will come to that realization at some point in their life. And at that point, they will reach out to you and try to form a relationship. Doesn't mean it'll work. It doesn't mean it'll work, but still. Yep, like, But that does happen. <clears throat> It's going to suck to walk away from your child. Mm -hmm. But if a woman is like threatening to call the police for you touching them just to keep you away, it's not worth right. risking everything in your life to go to jail for something you didn't do because she wants to be vindictive. <coughs> I would also say that it would be just as good to try and get custody. And make her pay for everything. That could just be a waste of money, though. It, it could be. But you never know. I mean, uh, granted, he's been arrested at this point and charged with child neglect, so probably wouldn't have happened. But right. I, I know a lot of men who have walked away and missed their kids and go through major depressions, and like, mm -hmm. it's hard. And, and the court system is set up to screw the dads. Yeah, it so. is. <clears throat> but it is possible. <clears throat> I do know a couple of men who got full custody of their kids and, and have a dope life. So during his life changes, I went through DBT, <coughs> trauma therapy, my grandma's passing, and my Oma's death. We got back together in 2018 after everything was done. I needed to work on me and get me out of my mental trash dumpster fire. 2018 to now, it has been a very hard road of repair, loss, and healing for the both of us. Communication is our hiccup. Neither of us learned healthy communication and fault lies with the both of us. However, we still work at it. I love that they both recognize they can't communicate. Mm -hmm. That's a big deal. If it's a breakdown communication in both ends and only one person is trying to work on it, you, you guys are not going to get anywhere. Yeah, you'd be like talking to a wall. Yeah. <clears throat> that one person is going to continue to grow and develop themselves. That other person is going to stay stagnant. And at some point, you guys are going to leave each other. Yep. Today, we are moving forward with getting his VA disability increased due to his PTSD from his tours, his depression, and anxiety that he has also incurred during those times. We have therapy with a prescriber requested for his ADHD medication. And of course, someone to talk to about those times. He's also waiting to hear from a bariatric surgeon, his depression, anxiety, and emotionally eats to where he is now severely overweight. His doctor had prescribed him an antidepressant and requ requested HRT for, lowering, for his lowering testosterone. So if he's looking to get bariatric surgery, that's the weight loss surgery, right? Yeah, I think so. He's going to have to change his diet before they approve him for that surgery. Right. He's going to have to show them that he can lose weight on his own before they even consider him as a candidate for that. In some cases. In some cases. <clears throat> the problem is, is if they do that surgery and you haven't learned how to properly eat, you're just going to get, you're going to it'll stretch your stomach back out. You're going to get fat again. Mm -hmm. The HRT thing, um, you don't want to do that to a normal doctor. So, uh, you know, it, it, I know that like age, um, Hormone clinics don't take uh, insurance, mm. so that could be a problem. But look into Summit Rejuvenation Centers. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of other places out there, but I know the owner of that place, and, and he's a good dude. But when it comes down to it, if, if he needs testosterone replacement therapy or if his estrogen is high, they can get that under control, and that will actually help his weight. Mm -hmm. Because he has been shutting down emotionally, we, emotionally with me since giving away his rights, I have shut down as well. We have worked hard to try to find ways to help our relationship, the contract, the report cards, the personal texts, and photos. I know I fail a lot because I see sex as love and sexual abuse as love. See, I told you it would come back, meaning her trauma. Right. Because of my past sexual <clears throat> history, I came to a revelation two weeks ago. I did express this to Nick, and he did read the journal entry I wrote to my younger self about it as well. I'm rereading that sentence. I know I fail a lot because I see sex as love and sexual abuse as love. That's a really rough trauma to navigate. Mm -hmm. That's why a lot of people end up in dob sub relationships. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Crazy. So the update is this. The contract and report cards are still in the works. I am hoping with the medications he will start to find himself again and have the motivation and to see that he is truly wonderful. 
He has been on board with the contract and report cards. He just doesn't know where to start. I feel like this past week had a lot of revelations and have been a domino effect of possible improvement and help. I go to his appointments as well with notes about things that concern us because he will forget in the office. It's teamwork. It is teamwork. I love that. I know that my mental health is a heavy load along with my history and I try to mitigate mitigate any fallout with him. I want to say mitigate. (laughs) You're really hung up on letters today. (laughs) It's not just letters. When I read a word, I read it the way it's written. Right. Like fill it. (laughs) It doesn't look like fillet. There's a T. It's fill it. (laughs) Phonetics. I hate it. (laughs) In regards to not knowing where to start, have I'm assuming you have watched the report card video. She's watched all of our content report card video mm-hmm. uh, it, there's the only place to start is to start <clears throat> yeah and the one that we recorded for the podcast is mm-hmm. long it's like 50 minutes yeah and it's in depth there's lots of communication there there's bonus questions involved that that would be just i actually pinned mm-hmm. the the questions in the comments so that you don't have to watch the entire video and write them down copy it to a notepad put it on your phone mm-hmm. pull your phone out that's report where you start card. yep that's it i did the work for you all you gotta do is find it He does what he can, when he can, to help me, support me, and love me. I count the little things he does now more than the bigger things, because the little things are what he can do for me, such as getting lettuce for my bunny after work on his way home, or like last night when he was throwing up from his ulcer he gets from work. I ran back to my car crying. He calls me to tell me it's safe to come in. (laughs) He cleaned up and checked everything. (laughs) Her vomit shit's funny to me. (laughs) But like this man just finished throwing up and he was like, okay, now I have to clean it up so my wife can come back in the house. I'm sorry. That's funny to me. Could you imagine me going, and you go, oh no, and run out the door crying. (laughs) (laughs) Oh man, people are strange. They really are. I'm still panicking and start crying harder. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I too have sobbed and cried in my car, but it's for like my depression. Yeah. Or I'm processing a trauma and I can't let you see me be a mess. (laughs) And I know what it's like to sit in my car sobbing. I'm so sorry. I could not imagine crying in my car because you're vomiting. Could could you imagine that that scenario? Like she finally starts pulling herself together and he's like, babe, it's safe. And she pictures vomit in her head again and just breaks (laughs) down all over again. (coughs) I'm sorry. I feel so bad laughing about it. It's just I get it. Yeah. Like touching wet food in the sink. I will cry about that. Yeah. Oh yeah. He then says, I will start the shower for you. Start the show in our room for you. So you can just come in, go to the room with the sound on and get your things for the shower, get in the shower and not hear my burps. I call them vomit burps. They are loud and honestly scary to me. (laughs) Every night I tell him I love him and find him so sexy. And every night he tells me that he loves me and reassures me that he still loves having sex with me. Sex equals love to me for now. It's a form of intimacy. There's nothing wrong with that. It really is. And, you know, I had, I, I wouldn't say I had the exact same mindset as her, but there was a point to where if you didn't find me sexually attractive or I didn't think, I'm going to reword that, if I didn't think you found me sexually attractive, you didn't love me anymore. So I get that mindset. I had to learn how to, like, re- rewire my brain to, like, when you touch my lower back, that's intimacy. Right. It is. You kissing my neck while I'm cooking is intimacy. So I had to stop asking for that reassurance. Do you still find me sexy? Do you still enjoy having sex with me? By noticing the small things that you do to show intimacy to me throughout the day. Um, It is the small thing. She said that earlier, which is why I was like, that's a good thing. It is. Small things really add up. Both good and bad. Mm -hmm. We do have a huge stressor. Our governor is trying to pass a legislation that will say that if a person who doesn't have their restitution paid off by so-and-so date will have their sentence commuted to time in prison. Restitution is an interest bearing is interest bearing. His total is now $120,000. Oh my God. Our governor passed a legislation in summer of 2022 stating anyone who hasn't paid for their restitution off in two years will be garnished. He was then garnished $1,000 a month, and in December, it was increased to what it is now of about $1,500 a month. 
I say about because the commissions he gets off of sales at the end of the month with the garnishment and the possible prison time, life has been stressful. Move. We are looking into VA lawyers to see if they can help with this. As of January 25th, it passed the first tier of voting. It needs a max of two tiers to pass or fail by 67%. I would move. Yeah, come to the free state of Florida. They don't mm-hmm. do this shit here. Actually, that's a lie. I think they just put a lien on you, so you yeah. can't own property and shit. But None of this has centered us from working together. However, the update has more negatives. I am working towards the positives. And then she goes on to say, there's a lot of jargon. I hope it's not too much for AJ or either of you to read. Well, we didn't. So we know you. Yeah. This didn't go to AJ. No. We're, we're, this is us. You both. And thank you for joining Patreon. I saw that you signed up yesterday. I appreciate yeah, that. I saw that too. You both are such a huge support. I just wanted to update you on the work in progress we are. You're starting to sound like me. Are you getting sinusy over there? I am. Oh, no. You better go emergency. Why do I enjoy kissing you so much? I know. Hey, you've known. This has been three weeks now that I've been going through this. I know, but I just enjoy you. <clears throat> Sorry, we'll just keep passing it back and forth, and eventually one of us won't be able to breathe anymore. When I pass away, I don't want to be buried. I want you to, well, not in a box. Take me to like a tulip field or something and let my body be food. I'll set the house on fire, take my own life, and we'll just burn in the house. I like that. And I'll send letters to everyone and blame everyone else for our actions. <laughs> I'm going to traumatize everyone. I'm ruining lives. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is your fault. Mm-hmm. Damn. That is not where I expected that to go. Well, for us, it'll be a tragic romance. Right. For everyone else, it'll be like, why did, it, why did I do this to him? <laughs> I'm like thinking of like, would I write anybody that letter? You know, probably not. I would send out letters to people who have really done me wrong in life and just say, I forgive you. Hmm. And then they can't, they can't hate me anymore because uh, you're the reason I'm dead, but I forgive you for it. You're the piece of shit in this story. (laughs) (laughs) I love that people give us updates. I do too. I enjoy it. This makes me happy. Yep. Even though that tomahawk situation made me uncomfortable. That's a little weird. Yeah. Where, uh, again, where did that come from? Right. Like, does he have a backpack he always carries? I, I feel like this is like, he's a real life video game character. Yeah. He just opened his menu and was like, tomahawk. <laughs> <laughs> I like that they're getting into a better place. Yeah. And she's working through her traumas. Try BDSM. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you can email Chris directly. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, you could. <clears throat> You want to go to the next one? Next one. Okay. Because that's going to get out of hand real quick. Oh, fuck. I don't remember what it is. We, we have a short where we took a TikTok comment and mm-hmm. made a conversation about it. And it was an afterthought. And it was about accountability. <clears throat> and it was about other people not being able to fix you. Right. I posted it to TikTok this morning. Within an hour, it had 10,000 views and like 200 comments. Mm-hmm. If you watch that TikTok... And you are one of the people who went to the victim mindset. You can't victim blame. It's not their fault. It's the man's fault. He should be trying to fix it. And that was your response. I just want you to know that you fell right into the victim category and you have a um, an issue mm. with self-accountability. Yep. So if you left a comment that was anything other than you were right, she should be working on her own trauma and trying to heal herself, you have accountability issues. Yep. You have a victim mindset and you need to work on that. And until you do, all of your relationships will be shit. Mm-hmm. You are going to be expecting other people to heal things that is your responsibility to heal. Mm-hmm. We have notebooks in every room <laughs> of the house. We do. So remind me what we were just talking about because I made a note. But we I were can't. talking about the victim mentality and how everybody on that, that conversation, on that, the comments in that section were either accountable or not. Right. There were a lot of people Mm -hmm. that misconstrued the conversation and took their own narrative, which is normal. That happens. Everyone does that. They want to somehow relate it to their life instead of the conversation at hand. The conversation is at hand is Mm -hmm. no one is coming to save you. Right. If you went through some horrible shit in life, it is your responsibility Mm -hmm. to do the work to make yourself better. Right. People can show you like, hey, I'm a good person and you Mm -hmm. can learn to trust that person or they can show you they're, they're not. But your duty to yourself is your your healing right if you choose to never deal with any of your trauma to never do any of the work to heal yourself you're going to have a shitty life Mm -hmm. and you're going to blame everyone else and you're going to always be the victim and it's always going to be somebody else's fault and pity me right 
that was the whole point of that conversation that we were having. Mm -hmm. But because it was a clip, people took what they perceived from it and they either played the victim or they took accountability. There was Mm -hmm. no in between. So if you're one of those people that played the victim, just know that you have a victim card that you're ready to use every opportunity you get. And if you're one of those people that took accountability and you're like, this isn't about that, this is about you healing yourself, mm-hmm. you have a leg up on everyone else who made a negative comment in that post. Yeah. You're, you're on, on a road to success. Right. <clears throat> and you know, when it comes to taking accountability, if you want to be a constant victim, you can have everybody in your life tell you you're doing great, you're doing better. You know, it wasn't your fault. He was the problem. That's going to that's gonna make you feel better for a little bit. Yep. And then tomorrow morning, you're going to still wake up and be in that cycle of trauma and wanting to be the victim and everybody else is the issue and you're not the problem. Right. So people telling you, nobody can fix you, but people telling you in your mind is fixing you that you did nothing wrong is going to be, it's like getting a hit. Right. You're going to constantly chase after people to tell you that you're okay and you weren't the problem. The attention. Right. And, and it doesn't matter if you weren't actually the problem. There's mm-hmm. still scenarios that could have played out differently on your behalf right. that could have changed your outcome. Mm-hmm. That yeah. doesn't mean that you, it's not doesn't mean that you weren't actually a victim. You can be the victim. Just don't play the victim card. Right. Yep. We just got an update email. Okay. So while you're looking for what you were looking for in your book and you want to talk about that, I'm going to skim this. Okay. So I'm going to try to multitask because this could be the end of the, the Well, podcast. I'm just going to finish my thought. Okay, you do that. It's like that saying, if you give a man a fish, he eats for a day. But if you teach him how to fish, he eats for a lifetime. Once you learn the tools to heal yourself and grow from your past, you're going to have that for the rest of your life. So the things that are a big deal to you right now are not going to be a thing in 10 years. And when something else comes up that could be similar to that situation, you know how to navigate it. So it's not going to be as bad. You have anything else you want to say? Um. <clears throat> I mean, on that, that last topic that we were having, when it comes down to it, I just, I don't understand how people are so quick to play a victim. Because that's all they've ever how, done in their how, whole life. Right. How, how fast people are like, well, it's somebody else's fault. I didn't deserve that. Mm-hmm. Of course you didn't deserve it. You don't deserve anything. Nobody deserves anything, good or bad. You have to earn the things that you get. Mm-hmm. And in the event that bad shit happens to you, that's life. Yeah. You have to navigate horrible waters to become a skilled sailor. Mm -hmm. And if you're on the boat and you're not the one sailing and you're not the one giving orders, you're never going to be in control. You're going to be the guy that's being told what to do constantly. Take control of your life. Right. I I don't understand that, that I understand that shitty things happen to people. It's happened Mm -hmm. to me. It's happened to you. I don't run around here crying about my life all the time. Right. My life is dope as fuck. I have created an amazing life for myself and it's because I've done that. Mm -hmm. I've not been, well, the world owes me something. God, how could you? I don't do that. Right. I just don't. I, I don't I don't know. I, I, I don't agree with that mindset, and it's going to piss off a lot of people. We may lose followers, but you know what? I got to be honest. If you just want to be a victim and whine and cry about your life, I don't want you following us. Yeah, I was just going to say, if you're stuck in the victim mentality, I don't want to hear constantly how you're stuck in your victim mentality. Mm-hmm. If you're not willing to grow as a person, I don't want you here. Yep. I only want people in my life who want to be better. That's it. Who want to have a good life, who want to be happy, who choose happiness over the misery in their life yeah, because it absolutely is a choice it is you know i was going through the comments on the videos that you posted and somebody said that i'm constantly happy mm-hmm. I, I choose to be happy you know you absolutely make that decision like there's days that you were absolutely not happy yeah and then within an hour or two of you being awake that changes mm-hmm. how far <sighs> into it are we uh, uh i would guess at this point probably three hours three and a half hours wow all right then i'm not gonna hit any of the points i'm gonna no, hit them because um, I don't know how much of this I'm going to cut out. <clears throat> okay. Worst comes worst, AJ can cut them into clips. That's a good idea. So I've come a couple of... Uh, uh, brother. Uh, blah, blah, blah. I've come a couple... Uh, Slow it down. I have come across a couple. That was a lot. Yeah, there's a whole lot of season there. <laughs> um, <clears throat> of like <clears throat> quotes and thoughts and sentences. And I wrote them down because I thought they'd be super fantastic talking points. Do not allow bitterness and disappointment to blind you from your opportunities. And when I read that, so we base a lot of of what we talk about in relationships and intimacy and closeness. Mm. If you are bitter in your relationship and you're holding grudges and resentment towards your partner, you are closing every opportunity for intimacy in your relationship. Absolutely. You are allowing your bitterness and disappointment to keep you from having a good marriage with your spouse. And and that's a choice. It is a choice. 
you have to be willing to look past all of that. The doors are closed now. If you are bitter and resentful and you guys are constantly bickering and you haven't touched each other in six months, you're in a sexless marriage. That starts at three months. If you haven't had sex for three months, you're in a sexless marriage. Yep. And that sounds not fun to me. You could open those doors again just by swallowing your pride, being the bigger person, and opening the door and just saying, I miss you. Yep. That ties into my next point. <laughs> With your handy dandy notebook. Yeah. Being the bigger person can be valued as beneath you or viewed as beneath you. It could be a test to your character that can open new doors for you. The fact that people see as being the bigger person as beneath me mm -hmm. blows my mind. Me too. Why would you not want to do the things that can make your life better? Right. That's so petty. Well, they don't do it. I'm not doing it. So you're choosing, you are making an active decision to have a shitty life. Mm -hmm. That is so fucking stupid. I have F-bombed a lot in this You one. have. If you're <coughs> in a relationship where both of you are waiting for the other person to make the first move, no one's going to make the first yep. move, right? Yep. Make the first move. Choose to be happy. And if you are opening doors and you're trying to regain that intimacy and they're just blocking you out, keep doing what you're doing. Live your life and be happy. And if they want to match your energy and start opening up and realizing that it's safe, they, they'll do that. Right. And then two months time, you guys are going to be right back where you were when you were dating. And you should still be dating. Yes. Speaking of dating, you want to do something tomorrow night? We can. You know that we got Wicked next month. <gasps> oh, I'm so excited. Yeah. I have to pick out a dress. I have to lose some weight before I get back into those clothes. I might have to go dress shopping. I'm so glad we're losing weight now. Mm -hmm. I've gained 10 pounds and I have like a little, not like a muffin top. It's more like a little mini muffin top. Those are my handles. You better stop that. And just call me your Harley. <laughs> <coughs> so this is a question for everybody, <coughs> including you. When was the last time you did more than the minimum for somebody that you love? Me? Yeah. Constantly. Give me an example. I put $200 in your bank account this morning. Thank you. I wasn't expecting that example. But I did. Right. There was no reason for it. I you woke did. up this morning, saw where the bank was, and was like, oh, she could probably use a little bit extra money. Here you go. And that's just spending cash. That's not yeah. for groceries. No, that's, not... that's yours. That's for whatever you want to spend it on. Yeah. Um, I might go to Hobby Lobby today. <laughs> so the reason I asked that question is because a lot of people get complacent in their life, and they do the bare minimum to get by. And a lot of it's habitual at this point. The I love yous, the good mornings, the goodbye kisses. That's just the bare minimum in your relationship. Can we talk about how important that is? Yeah. The habitual thing? Mm -hmm. We don't do that. No, we don't. And we've talked about this in previous podcasts, but we should talk about it again for those who are new. Mm -hmm. We don't habitually say I love you. No. There's times that I'll hang the phone up without saying it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> There's times that we've been together and I've left and people were like, damn, he didn't say I love you to you. And you've been like, yeah, we don't do that. And it really caught me off guard too because it doesn't phase <clears throat> me. Right. Because I'd rather you say I love you to me in a moment where you're feeling it versus just saying it because you're leaving a building. Right. Well, we also went through that the first time when we first told each other we loved each other. Mm -hmm. The next time it was said, I was like, I know, you know, just trying to be cute. But I told you, I was like, I'm not going to fall into a habitual pattern of saying it just because you do or saying it because it's expected. When I say it, I want you to know that I mean it in the moment. Right. So when we're sitting on the couch and we're watching TV and silence is broken with I love you, I'm like, okay, she means that shit. Yeah. <coughs> I did that last night. I can't remember what we were watching. What were we watching? I don't, uh, that climb thing with Jason Momoa. Right. We were sitting there for like an hour and a half, pretty much in silence, mm -hmm. showing each other stupid TikToks and whatnot. Then out of the blue, I just said, I love you. Right. And you're like, oh, damn, I love you too. What made you say that? Right. And it's important to ask. Yes. What, what? made you say that? Yep. Because there's a thought process that leads to me saying, I love you out loud. Right. And it's dope for you to hear it. I love hearing it. Right. But those moments matter. Right. They're, they're genuine. It's mm -hmm. not, okay, love you, bye, and hanging the phone up. Like yeah. it, it, I just did that like I was actually on a telephone from the <laughs> 80s, but <clears throat> that's a real thing. So, you know, and there are times that like we're, it's not often that we're not together, but mm -hmm. when we're gone for more than an hour, I make it a point to be like, hey, I miss you right now, or I'm thinking about you. Just because I want you to know that you're still relevant, even though you've been gone for 45 minutes. Yeah. What about other things? Let's see. Other things that I've done that wasn't the bare minimum, because I, I hate that term. I don't think that anything in life is the bare minimum. I think that everything that you do, no matter how big or small matters, I think that if you're not doing it enough, or if you've made the decision to not be consistent, mm -hmm. that could be problematic. <clears throat> but I don't think that helping somebody with the dishes or folding the towels or 
spending an extra 20 minutes with the kids on the homework or whatever the case may be is a bare minimum. I Everything agree. that you do is teamwork. And when you look at it as you guys working as a team, it's not bare minimum. Mm -hmm. They are taking workload off of you no matter how insignificant it may seem in the moment. Those in, insignificant 10, 15 minutes at a time adds up to hours over the week. It ends up to weeks over the course of a year or days. That shit matters. It does. <clears throat> but I also do shit like I'll, I'll buy you books. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you'll mention something and I'll be like, okay, I'll put that on the Amazon wish list so that the next time I place an order, I can order that. Right. Um, I try to buy you clothes. Mm -hmm. I, I know that. And I think that's kind of a weird thing because I don't like it when people buy me clothes. I really don't like it when people no. buy me clothes because I am so weird about, well, you could do it now because you know how I'm about my fabrics. Mm -hmm. But, I, you know, two years ago. You bought me shirts for Christmas or my you birthday. Threw them away. I absolutely did. I wasn't wearing that. I like, even told you if it, you're not going to wear these, <clears> give them back to me. And you're like, no, I got them. I felt like a burlap sack. But it's rude to give somebody their gift back. It sat in my closet for like eight months and then I donated it to charity or to a no kill shelter. <clears throat> I, but that's just the way I am. I'm not going right. to wear clothes that makes me feel uncomfortable. I have textural issues. Mm -hmm. So, but I know your clothing style and I know things that I would like to see you in. So I will research the shit before I bought it. Mm -hmm. And then you get it and you're like, oh my God, I love this. You know, yeah. The only materials I don't do is super scratchy things. Yeah, that's it. Well, regular cotton is super scratchy. I like tri blend t shirts mm -hmm. or or even like 50 50 blend polyester cotton because they're softer and thinner. And being in Florida, I don't want heavy t shirts, right? Let me hit my next point. You can do whatever you want, babe. <laughs> so, there is no luck or co coincidence in life. Mm -mm. If you have bad luck, it's because you made bad decisions and didn't prepare. It could be that. Or the universe is saying to learn to navigate this before I really give you what you're looking to Ooh. have. <laughs> That's good. Right? Yep. If you are running into the same situation over and over and over again, and you don't know why this keeps happening to you, ask yourself, what am I doing in my life that keeps leading me down the same path? Yeah. You make choices every single day. When you wake up, you make the choice to brush your teeth or not. You make the choice to brush your hair or not. You make a choice to get dressed or stay in the same pajamas you've been in for the last three days. Your life is full of choices. The people that you date, how often you call your family. Things do happen to you from external factors. <laughs> and I said that on a TikTok and someone was like, yeah, but there's external factors. And I was like, I literally said that, but okay. We get that a lot. Yeah. People are just so quick to throw some shit in our face mm -hmm. and it's in the video. And there's always at least one comment where I'm like, it was in the video. Right. There are external factors that come <clears throat> into your life. People who make their own choices that can affect you. Nine times out of 10, looking at back at my life, I can tr pinpoint something. And I was like, damn, if I made a choice six months prior right. that was different, I would not have been in that situation. Right. You can also choose to, how you respond right. to that situation. Mm -hmm. There's always a choice. Always a choice. And this is totally off topic. And someone actually commented this on one of my TikToks. I was like, damn, women, you really are out here just putting yourself in a bad position in society, huh? So there was a girl at the, at the gym filming herself for a TikTok or whatever she was doing. And she was getting crushed under the weight she was trying to lift. Not a single man stopped to help her because she visibly had a phone up on a tripod and not one of them want to be labeled as a predator or trying to essay her or a creep. Yep. Imagine how that, that <laughs> imagine that. <clears throat> you know, there was a girl who got blasted because there was a dude in the background waiting because she was in the, um, the like the deadlift area or something like that. And she was doing the weighted hip thrust hip thrusts. And she was like, oh, my God, this guy is watching me. He's so creepy. This is why I never brought him public and all this kind of shit. And at one point, she's struggling to put weights on the bar. So he leaves where he is, comes around and he's like, do you need help? She was like, no, I got this. I don't need your help. And he walks away and that was the end of it. Right. And she was like, oh my God, I'm so uncomfortable. This guy is making me so uncomfortable. He was probably standing there waiting for you to finish whatever you're doing, thinking I can't believe this girl sitting here filming herself in the gym when I'm trying to get my workout done, waiting for you to leave. You're berating him the whole time. He comes and tries to help you to probably make you hurry up to get out of the way. When you told him no, he left. He didn't continue harassing you. Right. He didn't come back and say, well, let me help you. You look like you're really struggling. And she, the whole time, oh, he's so creepy. I feel so uncomfortable. This is why I'm always sexualized. 
Women are putting themselves in position. If you get hurt in the gym, a man is not going to help you. Could you imagine how that scenario would have played out if you had walked over there and be like, you realize you're on a dev- deadlift platform, right? There are people standing here waiting to deadlift. Can you move? Oh, then he'd be an asshole. Yeah. Yeah. You can't win. No, there is no winning. You can't be a nice guy. You can't be a dick because either way you lose. Mm-hmm. Don't like people. Infuriating. Yeah. Oh, and I had a point before we derailed off into all of that. Like you were saying, a man can be a good guy and he's harass- he's labeled as a harasser or a predator mm-hmm. or he's an asshole and he's just labeled as an asshole. The reason that I am on the internet the way I am calling women out for their bad behaviors and their toxic behaviors and their lack of communication and the fact that they want men to fix what other men have done to them is because it's more acceptable for me to do it than it is for a man to do it. Right. Because they just want to call me a traitor and all that kind of other shit. Yeah. Which pick, is just, pick me. <laughs> pick me, pick me. Yeah, I'm a married woman saying pick me. Yeah, you were. You were picked. Damn right. I was mm-hmm. forever picked. Mm-hmm. I want to add to that that good luck statement. Yeah. Um, there's actually a phrase that says good luck is the work uh, is the result of hard work and preparation. Mm-hmm. So when you asked me, when you made that luck statement, that is my go-to. I don't believe in luck. I right. think that everything that happens in your life is a result of the decisions that you've made and the work that you've put in. AJ messaged me last night and told me that <clears throat> when we hit 3,000 subs, he wants me to email Laura Doyle. Okay. And I was like, no. He's like, are you one of those people that get mad or motivated when somebody calls you a pussy? I was like, it's a word. It doesn't do either one of those things. I was like, but understand that I'm not going to reach out to somebody and try to make a business decision without being properly prepared. Mm -hmm. Unless you've got Riverside figured out and we have something to offer this woman, there's no reason for me to message her. People don't do things to just do them. They do them because it benefits them. So if I've got my shit in, in order... And I know my shit and I reach out to her and I'm confident and I'm able to say, this is going to benefit your book sales to be on our podcast. We've already sold probably 50 copies of your books just talking about it. Mm -hmm. I would like one hour of your time to answer emails to see if we agree. Would you be willing to dedicate 30 minutes to an hour of your time? That's a professional email. She's going to read that and go, okay, they're Mm going to look at our TikTok. Mm -hmm. Almost 4,000 subscribers between the two of us. 400,000 subscribers. 400,000, right, between the two of us. They're going to look at our, our, our our YouTube, I can then send statistics. We have 10,000 hours watched. Mm -hmm. During those 10,000 hours, we've mentioned your books 50 times. Uh, We have a Patreon group where we've in-depth talked about your books. We have now have people telling us that they've bought your books because we've mentioned them. Mm -hmm. I have something to offer. It's not about being a pussy. It's about being prepared. I want success and I want to not fail. I have nightmares about failure. I do. I have have nightmares about about the comic book store still. And it's been gone for two years. So before you started going into the fact that this gives you nightmares and affects your sleep, I was like, wow, this man's super sexy. <laughs> wow, this man's super damaged. But then you started talking about nightmares, and I was like, well, I can't tell him his nightmares are sexy to me because that's that's not beneficial yeah. for either of us. <laughs> but your determination, the fact that you right. want to be prepared is hot. I, I'm driven. I don't want to lose. Right. And it's not about winning or losing so much in like a, a victory mindset. It's mm-hmm. more of I don't want to fail. I will take my lessons because I don't see those as a failure. If I do something and it doesn't doesn't succeed, Mm -hmm. why didn't it succeed? I'm going to pick that shit apart. I know why the comic book store failed. I'm not delusional about that. I know everything. Mm -hmm. And I know that if I would have made different steps, it probably would still be here because I see other people opening stores like that in our area that are successful. And it eats at me. Like you wouldn't believe to know that. Oh, no, I I know what it's like. Mm -hmm. when It wasn't even mine. I gave it away while it was profiting. Right. And it failed. Mm Mm-hmm. I see that as a me failure, even though I wasn't in charge and had nothing to do with it because I was so involved. So I, I take that personal and I'm not over it. Like, I, I don't know if I'll ever get over that because I, I feel like I could have done more. Right. And it wasn't even on me at that point to do it. I don't know. Mm-hmm. That's kind of really irrelevant to any of this, but. No, I get it. Well, that's all the points I wanted to touch on. My pilot analogy for self-accountability is being shown to sixth graders today. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I hope that dude actually tells us how that goes. Yeah, me too. I hope that creates a discussion. Me too. Yeah, sixth grade, you've got uh, a malleable mind. Mm-hmm. And if you can teach a sixth grader to, to freely think versus remember, right? that's a, a pivotal point in their life. Mm-hmm. I think it's super dope that someone's using my videos to help grow young minds. Mm-hmm. Oh, we got another Patreon. Two more Patreons. Yep. That's five new Patreons today. Yeah, in less than 24 hours. That's crazy. <clears throat> yep, it's doing the thing. Us, us plugging <laughs> it and pushing it. Speaking of Patreon, if you guys aren't part of Patreon, you should be. Exclusive content, live streams, yep. more in-depth conversations about the Chris's. 
Yep. Go subscribe. Today is actually live stream day. Oh, it is. Yep. Heck yeah. Not that they'll see this on the day that it's live screen stream day, but we go live on Fridays on we Patreon. <coughs> well, I have nothing else to add. Let's end this, take a break so that I can get all this flim out and then we'll Patreon record. Okay. We'll see you guys on the next one. Bye guys. Hey guys, if you enjoyed that, found it entertaining, funny, or even learned something you didn't know before, share it. And if you're not subscribed, why aren't you? And for those of you who want to support us, get access to exclusive content and live streams, we do have a Patreon. All the links are in the description.